I have longed for thee, my only hark, the footsteps of the groan. Lingering is so very lonely when one lingers all alone. Will thou come with me and linger, and discourse with me of those secret things the mystic finger points to but will not disclose? When I'm all alone, my glory always fades, because I find being lonely drives the splendor of my vision from my mind. Oh, come, oh, come, my own, my only, through the gorm and gust of groan. Lingering has become so lonely as I linger all alone. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to the Fluffies. The music shall begin rolling. Now! Every man lives, not every man truly dies. Well, I'm already happy. We've had a Gormenghast reference. <laughs> I'm done. I'm very, very pleased. Immediately. I was talking to Andy when last we recorded, uh, which you'll hear in the future, <laughs> but for us was the past, because podcasting oh is a wibbly-wobbly spaghetti of time. Timey-wimey, yeah. etc. Yeah. I mean, the, the best way to describe podcasting and podcast scheduling is like sticking your head in a black hole and hoping for the best. Um, <laughs> but uh, Is it much like edging? <laughs> Only if you're animated General M. Bison. Uh, go to the Patreon to listen to the uh, the outcast cutouts uh, to understand the rest of the story behind that. Um, uh, yeah, I've got 45 um, cold opens in a little notepad file. Uh, and I add to that constantly, weekly. And so whenever we set a show, I just open the notepad, spin through the pages, press it, and then that's the one that we do. Brilliant. Well, I'm always, I, you know, I always like to play a game where I try and figure out where it's from. Mm -hmm. That was easy. Yeah. That was just, before you'd even said Gormenghast, I could have guessed that one. Well, I mean, you know? uh, let, let's find a uh, another one from the, the notes, see if you know where it's from. Because I found I found out when we recorded uh, the show with me and Griffin uh, from the the future or for us from the past that you've just got a book full of these, don't you, Griff? Yep. It's, yeah, it's, it's, you just actually actually have like a, a rolodex of these things. Um, I've I've got one here, uh, which is really hard for you to 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 get. I lie awake in your sleep, your soul to take and keep. I am your cold nightmare. You'll never be aware. I am the thief in the night that instills hellish thright in your subconscious. I stalk. You may scream, but not talk. That when you close your eye, I shall take you as my prize. And Joe, is it a song? No, it isn't. That is uh, translated from a um, sigh basically a side toilet and it was in, uh, engraved into the wall that's a pretty boss right. toilet yeah that's yeah as like graffiti goes that's pretty yeah. cool right? well, the best bit of medieval graffiti is always going to be man will never be free until the last king has been strangled by the entrails of the last priest which dates mm -hmm. back from about 10 bc <laughs> it's what i think about while i have a shit on the toilet evergreen, to be fair man. it's evergreen oh yeah isn't it, oh one? yeah absolutely Absolutely. It's just... Until, and you know, of course it actually happens. Well, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that uh, we should all go out there and get some, um, uh, you know, entrails out of priests, but, you know, what else are you going to do on a Saturday night? I quite like the fact that, uh, yeah, my cold open apparently has made it snow inside train stations. So, uh what? Excellent. How does it make? How do, you, how do you make it snow inside of a train station? Just, uh, just ask Darren. Darren saw a train station mm -hmm. today that uh, the snow was inside it. So, yeah. It can't have a roof, right? Because that's not how that works. Unless someone's shoveling in snow. Just <laughs> being a complete cock. <laughs> just, yeah. There's, just, there's like a chain gang just moving just snow. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking hooligans. Just to be a dick, right? <laughs> this is the best practical go I've ever come up with. <laughs> Bloody kids. <laughs> Brilliant. So, everybody, welcome to the Fluffies. I, as always, am Adam. And with me today is the rotting corpse that is Andy. Only sometimes Andy, though. Only sometimes Andy. Mm -hmm. You're always gruff. I'm only sometimes Andy. Sometimes I'm something else. <laughs> 
<laughs> and speaking of being metaphysical, it's George. <laughs> Hello. Why do I point? Why? I do that every time. Can you see him? Because he's on your screen. You can see his little face. So you're like, there he is. It's my boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's George. Yeah, it's weird. But I always point off to the side. But you're not actually in a room with me. <laughs> and you're, you're pointing off to the wrong side. Maybe, maybe yeah. to you I am, but to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. Yeah, but to the audience, the people are looking at you too. <laughs> well, all right then. And George. <laughs> there you go. Is that better? There you go. Over there. <laughs> Remember, uh, Mr. Gruff, me and you are the bread and George is the jam. I mean, I've... <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> okay. I've said that many a time. George is my jam. <laughs> George is my jam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're not alone. <laughs> Sticky and sweet, and he's all you need. <laughs> uh, I like my George like I like my jam on <laughs> very hot bread <laughs> everywhere. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, burns <laughs> like napalm, doesn't it? You know. <laughs> Calm down, Adam. You got a a small boy trying to yeah. sleep in the room next door. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> and it's going again. It's going down that Slanesh route that it always goes down on this mm -hmm. show. Yeah, we already did like an actual like couple of hour long Patreon episode about Slane. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Oh, we once did an episode that was all about sexuality in the Grimdark and that came out at nearly three hours long. You know, that's a... That's one of the best ones we've done. It's brilliant. Mm -hmm. that, I, I've listened, re-listened to that recently. It's a really good discussion. <laughs> it's a really good discussion. It's one, it's one that we kind of need to get back into that kind of idea again, you know, trying to do things. Yeah. Like, so up for mm. that. So up I for that. I quite enjoy just opening to discussion about things that you don't really read about or hear about. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. interesting. Anyway, um, so the Fluffies. So for those of you who are mm -hmm. new to the Fluff and Hammer and or um, have not experienced the Fluffies before, every year in January, uh, for the last five, six years now, we... Wow. Uh, we put out a little survey uh, where people answer, uh, let us know what has been good, what has been bad, and what has been outright ridiculous. Um, one of the things that happens for some unknown reason is people enter the batshits, and we have got some absolute stunning batshits. Uh, Sometimes they get so creative. Mm -hmm. the so creative. We have like running stories and things like little like stream of consciousness poems and all sorts of things. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's why I honestly believe that the Fluff and Hammer listeners are some of the strangest people <laughs> out there. Well, and I love I them. Mean, I love them. Absolutely. You mm. would be, wouldn't you? Oh, yes. Absolutely. Why would you be here otherwise? This is true. We are not here to be sensible. We're not here to uh, to talk about points values. We are here to enjoy ourselves and amuse ourselves in the best ways we can, um, which is why uh, I've decided to cancel the Fluffies, and instead we're going to play my brand new game, Kebab, the Donner Party story, um, which is going to be... <laughs> It's news to all of us, you know. <laughs> I want to be the part that's a rat. <laughs> oh no, no the the Donna Party story is uh, is going to be a very very um, interesting experience where we find out how long we last before being cannibalized. Not long. No, I mean you uh, were you wouldn't long. you wouldn't last long. I'd last long enough. Mm. A bit peckish, you know, pointy stick. You two would come off the mountain with chained um, holes in your bottoms. <laughs> Apart from uh, the obvious, actually, Andy's got a, a distinct advantage. Yeah. You know, well, being the decayed one, the rotten one. Yeah, you don't really want to eat me. Really wants to eat. You in know. theory, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I don't know. I've eaten many a zombie in Minecraft, and uh, you just get a little bit of a dicky tummy. That's about it. See, I always got complained that one when I was eating rotten flesh in that game. They always uh, people in <laughs> chat on Twitch were like, "Don't eat rotten flesh. It doesn't do any any good." I'm like, mm, "Num num num zombie flesh." Uh, puts your so stamina up. Like, um, yeah, that's what I was it's saying. Like, it's very much not like fear and hunger then, or something like that, <laughs> where it has like real effects, like real effects. No, 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 you, you, no. you just get uh, you get a little stamina, and then your your health starts going down a little bit. Ah, but but not you, enough. Right. You just eat enough, and it just offsets it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And uh, if if you're needing to get out of somewhere where it's dark, um, you know, you eat a couple of zombies, and you're fine. Mm -hmm. It's like spinach yeah. and Popeye. Yep. You know. And it drops just everywhere. There's so on. much rotten flesh everywhere. It's like a, a resource that most normal Minecraft players don't utilize. 
I will. <laughs> it's foolish. Okay. It's foolish. Though. Yeah. And uh, uh, that is why I, uh, I'm going to now talk about my life story of being on a Brazilian aircraft that crashed the Himalayas. Um, anyhow, right, moving on. There's a lot of cannibalism in this one for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah, yeah again, that's Slaneshi route, but in a slightly different way. I do firmly believe that... Uh, <laughs> I, I now need to write kebab the Donna Party story as a throwaway joke. I'm quite <laughs> quite proud of myself for that one. Um, so yes, we're going to do the fluffies, uh, but before we do that, I think a little questions in order. George, yeah. what have you been doing hobby wise over the Christmas period, if at all anything? Oh, I've been so busy. I haven't really done a great deal. I have been reading Gene Father, mm. which is kind of cool. I mean, you know, it's lovely to see Fabius back, and it's great to see him with with Belisarius. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, two of the smartest and most rational characters in the 40k universe um so it's interesting to see them coming at similar problems from a, a yeah. slightly different perspective gene father is a weird weird book because it's it is very odd isn't yeah. it? like the structure of it's weird it's very calm yeah it's oddly calm, isn't it? There's not, there's very little in the way of like the, the huge battles and things. In this there's story. no bombast to it Which at all. It's good. Yeah, that's good. More of that, please. You know, more of the character stuff, right? Did you? The best way to describe Gene Father is it's a book where nothing happens, but that nothing is incredibly important. Yeah, and very fascinating. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very fascinating. I mean, there's all the stuff about Call, like deciding what personalities he has mm -hmm. at any one moment. So if he wants to feel a bit boisterous, then he, he just plugs in the right personality for that day, <laughs> and that's it. Um, and the fact that he does not give a shit. No. He is such a heretic, isn't he? By the Imperial standards, right? He's done more and gone further than many characters who are considered to be absolute heretics, yeah? How does he do his practice runs when he has to tell mm. Gilliman news and tell oh, me yeah. that that's not that's pure heresy. heresy right? I mean, he knows it as well. That's what I love. He knows it. He knows that if Gilliman knew about it, he would absolutely like obliterate it. Mm -hmm. um, it's brilliant. It's absolutely, it makes you wonder what else he's got stored away, doesn't it? Oh yeah. Oh what yeah. What else is he up to? It's the same with Fabius, obviously. You never know quite what Fabius has got in his back pocket. No. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're very similar. They're very similar. They're both oddly, and this is going to sound really weird, but they are oddly utopian characters mm -hmm. in their outlook, you know? They're both, they're, they're those characters who are actually looking forward to a point beyond the 40k universe mm -hmm. where everything is resolved. Yeah. It's so strange to think, but that is the case, isn't it? So when I was reading through it, I was expecting the the meeting between Cole and Bile to be a um, either a very smooth integration of them both, or a very cataclysmic moment. Yeah. And it isn't neither of them. No. They just kind of talk and throw yeah, barbs at really each other, and it's really because because Bile does respect Cole massively. It's really strange. Yeah. It's really hard because Bile doesn't respect anybody. No, you no. know he hates everyone. He's a he's 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 quite a he's, he's you know he's pretty much a bastard, isn't he? Let's be <laughs> honest. Um, I mean, the, but he does respect Paul. The main reason I haven't written a review of it yet is because I still don't quite understand the book if that makes sense yeah. it's like i need yeah. i need to go through it again or at least two more times i think to really kind of how because there is stuff in there that is like really big you know really big yeah there's stuff happening isn't there there is real stuff but it's all on like the fringes it's all sort yeah. of almost implied isn't it? You yeah know? uh for me the biggest thing is is call himself mm -hmm. it's the stuff that he is doing and that he is allowed to do Within like the Mechanicum, the various cults of the of the Adeptus Mechanicus, and also with regards to the wider Imperium, he's got himself into a place where he can do whatever the hell he likes, yeah, yeah. and he's doing just doing whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. No, and then and then there's um, what's he called Alpha Primaris, the mm. the bodyguard, and the... yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
It's very, yeah, it's absolutely fascinating. And again, you're getting this thing with Bile, like, I mean, being the clone lord, you know, so you don't really know how many of him are out there. He is effectively immortal, mm-hmm. isn't he? Yes, because he can just, He's made he picks up a new body. Immortal. Yeah. Yeah. And even when, like, if one of his bodies dies, all of his memories are automatically uploaded to a new one somewhere. So he just go, it just emerges and it goes on, you know? It's hard to know how many of him are actually operating out mm-hmm. there. Which means that you can legally have multiple Fabius piles mm. on the battlefield at once. It, it's actually really clever the way they've it, like they've written bile in fiction because it basically means that it exactly that you mm-hmm. know it almost explains why you know one army might have Fabius bile in it and another might have mm-hmm. Fabius bile in it. Well, it's one of his clones. Yeah, isn't it? bile versus bile. <laughs> yeah, and the, I could see that happening in the fiction. I can see that happening. An iteration of Bile meeting an iteration of Bile. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of them being older than the other, so knowing more. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it could be really interesting. It could be really, really fascinating. It, I think the most fascinating thing about Bile is that the Bile that we went through the trilogy of books with doesn't exist mm. anymore, yet there but, is still a collection of Fabius Biles out there, but none of them mm-hmm. are him. It's the weirdest thing somewhere on some crone world in the midst of the eye of terror the original one is still in that mm-hmm. that casket that crystal casket yep. um rejuvenating presumably no be... it's it's just brilliant it's just wonderful i mean like it's it really does make sense for that character mm-hmm. i just love the way he treats other people as well <laughs> like the other agents like the agents of chaos and one that he comes across it's just like they are completely disposable. He's got nothing but contempt for them. Um, and somehow, somehow, even when he's like openly expressing that contempt, <laughs> he gets them on side. <laughs> it's really weird. I suppose if you've got, uh, if you are with Fabius Pyle, you've got no choice. You've got to follow what he says and do what he says, because otherwise you might end up an experiment. Yeah. And even when you do, you're going to get fucked anyway, aren't oh, you? Because that's what he's like. Yeah, that's just who he is. That's just who he is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he doesn't have any regard for anyone or anything. He thinks this universe has failed. Yep. Right? He thinks that, like, you know, he's looking forward to, like, the next universe or the next iteration of reality. Yeah, he, he wants everything broken down. There's so overlap between him. There's so much overlap between him and certain other characters, like Aramon, mm-hmm. you know? So much overlap, but I imagine him and Iron Man would not get on. No, because they can get things from a very di- it, right. This is the the fascinating thing about Bile, Iron Man, Call, and all all these different characters. The only two characters in the entirety of Forty K who are intermeshable, who are on different sides mm. but intermeshable, are Call and Bile. Right? Yeah, definitely. Everybody else has got either their own um, their own weight behind them, which means that they mm. would not be able to to intermesh with somebody else from another side, or in the case of Gilliband, he's boffing an elder. Um, mm. Ariman is coming at things from such a different angle to call that whilst they both have the pretty much the same goal, they the would butt goal. heads constantly on every single step. Yeah. Well, Fabius, Fabius would say of Ariman that he's deluded. Yeah, he would say that you are using the war. You, 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 you you're already lost. Mm-hmm. What we need to do is silence it. The warp needs to be becalmed, yep. and humanity needs to be wrenched away from it. Whereas Araman believes that it has to be conquered and used as a tool mm. to bring about kind of like a, an ascension of humanity, a metaphysical ascension. Well, that was right. Um, you know, if by trying to conquer the warp, you right. are feeding it and thus giving it more power. Mm-hmm. So I mean, he's making That's the same it. mistake That's as his dad, which is yep. kind of funny. Yeah. Yep. Pretty much. Mm. Pretty much. That's it. That's the irony of Araman, right? Mm-hmm. Although. That said, there is this weird little wrinkle with Araman, and that is that Zeech doesn't know what his destiny is. Mm. Is he still he in the Black read... Library? Has he left there by now? Oh, he's left there, yeah. That, okay. That's old news now, that is. He's, he's done all that. Yeah, a lot has happened since then. A lot has happened since then. <laughs> yeah, he, he published um, The End and the Death. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um... <laughs> No, a lot has happened since then. I mean, he's kind of oddly, weirdly succeeded, but not. Mm-hmm. Like, he has restored one thousand sun to its fleshy state. Mm. Yeah. But it ain't right. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's odd. It's, re- it's, it's it, progress. You need to read the book. Yeah. Oh, please tell me it's backwards. 
Just everything is backwards. <laughs> it's heads on the face on the back of the head. <laughs> so everyone would look at it going, I can't see any problems. And Darren was just, no, he's back, he's backwards. He's the wrong way round. Well, just turn him the right way round then. <laughs> no, no, he's, he's the wrong way round. <laughs> Andy. Ah. Have you been doing any hobby? I say, have you been doing any hobby? Andy, tell me about all the uh-huh. hobby you've been doing because bloody hell, dude. Uh, oh, stuff. You have, like, since- you have absolutely smashed it out the park over the Christmas period. Yeah, I got the um, Flesh Eater Court box all done for the most part. The, the, mm-hmm. th- the good thing about my undead paint scheme is it's really quick to knock out. It's good it's it really very looks quick good as well ah, thank you function works you yeah know. thank again thankfully just kind of all works so you just have to spray them black dry brush them and then mm-hmm. throw in a bit of red here and then it's it's pretty much done yeah fantastic uh, but it's so striking i i love that kind of paint scheme i love mm. it i think it works so well especially for armies like like the flesh eater courts and the good thing is because of the way that it's been dry brushed if i wanted to just throw on a a uh, a, a contrast paint over the top of them for like a flesh color. I can do that in the future if I'm ever yeah, like yeah. Oh, I, I just want to color mm-hmm. them up. I can do without too much faff, which is again quite nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Brilliant. all of all of that box set is done. Uh, I've I, I've got the um, the Warcry uh, Ghoul box set. I've got it dry brushed. Oh. I just need to dot the eyes and do the red bits on them, and then they'll be done. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I was focusing on finishing off uh, the Imperial Guard Cassikins, which I did. Yeah. Oh wow! Um, nice. The Kazakins are done. Uh, what else did I finish? Uh, oh, I got a Rogel Dawn. The Rogel Dawn tank's done. That, um, honestly, man, that Rogel Dawn is stunning. Mm-hmm. I was actually pretty happy. Like usually, I'm like, eh, I don't know how it comes out. But mm-hmm. when I finished the Rogel Dawn, I was like, you know what? I, I'm I'm fairly pleased with that. I I don't think I could have done any better on that one that, for myself that, at the current stage of math, which I was happy yeah. about. It it does feel like you've like leveled up in painting recently, Andy, and that no, oh, thank you. That bloody when I saw that Rogel Dawn, my jaw dropped. It is <laughs> so damn good. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm. Thank you. I'm, I'm quite pleased with it. Uh, uh, Daffid the, over on the, the sorry, uh, mm-hmm. big swing in D says, uh, anyone else reckon that Andy should take a step at armies on parade for his undead? Yes. Mm. What do you yeah. have to do for that? Uh, you just make a board and put them all on the board, and then oh. enter it into the games workshop. Yeah. Enter into the games. Workshop, uh, yeah. I do have the what's the set called? The crypt set from AOS. What's that one called? Mm-hmm. Um, Is it just called I, the crypt? Some probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think so. Yeah. I, yeah. It, it's kind of parts that you send to me, it. but I've got like my own unbuilt set as well. So technically, mm-hmm. I could I could make a little set from them. I do have a big lump of polystyrene as well, which I can fashion into some kind of ground so yeah maybe yeah. maybe it's worth giving a crack at i suppose yeah yeah mm, i think so, i think it'll look so really good it. yeah it could be neat the the only problem with making a big styrofoam board for them is where do you put the styrofoam yeah <laughs> what would you do with it when you're not using it yeah i mean uh, it, doesn't, re- re- hmm? it doesn't have to be a styrofoam board i mean you could just get like a um uh, a square of uh plastic card or something um i'd have to look at the actual dimensions of what you need to to, to put it in and then just build up on that see it's not as um like massive and messy as a, a styrofoam board if that makes oh, sense. I, the, the reason I'd, I'd use the styrofoam is because i still have like a load of it left right and yeah, I, yeah. I, I could just resize it like if you found me the dimensions I could, yeah i could just like cut mm-hmm. it down or whatever i suppose uh i got the lehman russ tank done as well that came first and the chimera mm-hmm. done uh, I say I, I with all these like tanks and things. I th- say this without like the extra spare weapons. I've still got like turrets and spawns and mm-hmm. separate yeah, weapons yeah. that need doing as well. But for the most part, they're all done. Uh, today Brilliant. I finished up adding most of the transfers uh, to everything uh, to all mm-hmm. my individual units. The only things I haven't done are the five command squad members uh, for the Imperial Guard and three or four heavy weapons people from just the infantry yeah other than that wow. everything's now got transfers on the shoulders now uh and in the process because i haven't spilt anything in a while uh, i decided hey why not have a laugh and kick over my microsol oh, uh, so no. lost, yeah <laughs> i lost like over over half of the content of my microsol so that was, oh that was no fun. Uh, yeah it, it, so a, a load of my sofas as well wet and smelling of chemicals as well which is fun <laughs> Oh, hey, no. you just sit there and just breathe it in. What's the worst that can happen? Yeah, yeah. Well, What's the worst. You know, happen? I sprayed it down with like, um, you know, you, you disinfectant and stuff like that, and went. Well, we can't do anything else. What can you do? <laughs> no. Just let yeah. it dry. 
Um, yeah. But yeah, eventually that's stop smelling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> eventually, uh, I think I'm slowly getting to the point where I've nearly got a usable, fully functional thousand fifteen hundred point Imperial Guard army. Nice. Uh, the, wow. The main I'm I'm going to be looking to Big D for for help because uh, the Hatchet's doing their uh, combat patrol. Uh, mm-hmm. magazine subscription so i'm gonna ask him if he can help me get like maybe 40 uh, uh infantry because i'll bring mm-hmm. me up to 60 and that's three separate squads i think that's yeah. the usual amount you need uh i'll be asking for two sentinels because i've got one sentinel two more sentinels i think is again a good spread of them mm-hmm. um and i think they've got in a castellan which is one of the leader units apart from that the only things i need to buy from the website uh, maybe I, I need to get at least in a, probably two Lehman Russes, probably. Yeah. Uh, I need either the Lord Solar. Is that his name? The guy on the big yeah. horse? Oh, Solar, Solar Macarius. Yeah. yeah I, think that, that, I think that's his name. The guy on the, he's got the golden armor sitting on the big white. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yes. The Lord Solar. Oh, yes. something. He's great. Yeah. I, I hear he's like a, a really important pick for a lot of armies because apparently he's just mm. really good at giving out orders. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wouldn't mind getting Ursula. Um, just because, again, she's another good leader character. Um, and I think and another group of Kassigan, because only 10 Kassigans, you probably need another group of Kassigans in there as well. Mm-hmm. And I'll pick up the um, the Death Corps of Krieg uh, kill team as well, just because they look nice. It's like, yeah, they look why great, not? Right. Yeah. But for the most part, that's done. Uh, I can't do any Necron stuff because they require using the airbrush, and the airbrush is it's too cold and wet and yeah. damp at the moment yeah. to do the airbrush. Because uh, right. for the Necrons, it's like, you spray them black. I then got to spray them with an airbrush to get them copper. Then I've mm-hmm. got to use an airbrush to spray spray their faces white. Mm-hmm. It's just not. It's just too much faff in this weather. So that's yeah. No, that's uh, that's that that is summertime malarkey to be dealing with. That's for future uh, Andy. Their codex, Andy. No, I've, I've been looking at it. It's been sold out on most of the yeah, uh, the, the the price sites. But uh, the, again, the reason I'm not like rushing to get it is because you know I can't play the game, so it's, it's kind of a bit redundant in some ways, unfortunately. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's a good. I hear it's, it's good. good. Yeah, it sounds good mm-hmm. from the small bits you've told us on uh, on the Facebook chat. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm very nice yeah it's very nice indeed they've uh yeah they're back on you know, i hear they they've on. done some tweaking already to the rules for the necrons from yeah, that book this, but it wasn't major i mean like for some yeah. reason the websites were there were people out there were going oh it's this massive nerf it's not it's it, not it was they've kind of reworded. no it was it was kind of a big nerf to the tesla guns because you could pair the tesla guns up with some things and they did silly damage that's the point, though. They, yeah. You, if you read the rules that they're talking about, they were. It's so clear they were. It was never intended to be done like that. It's so clear. All they've done is tweaked the word yeah, yeah, to yeah. make it what it was obviously meant to be anyway. Oh yeah, totally. And even yeah. with that, it's it's just removed a really a kind of silly combination. You know, that was a bit much. <laughs> It was cool though. In combination can, with everything else, I, I know? can see why people would be sad because they found this really powerful. You know, when people find something really powerful, they want to use the mm-hmm. thing that's really powerful. And this, I guess, this is why you need someone to read over the rules who maybe isn't Ooh, part of yeah. the team who can then go, because "Oh, I, mean, I'll, I can do this," and they go, "Oh, I do. Oh, hang on, don't yeah. do that. <laughs> that's crazy." I think it's such a good army anyway, and their, their detachments are ace. I was their detachments are. I was shocked to hear that monoliths are actually viable now, which is kind mm-hmm. of funny. Oh, yeah. Because monoliths were shipped yeah. before, and now they're kind of good. Or they can be good. Now they're, they're kind of good. Yeah. yeah. No, they are. <laughs> they are good. The ability they to teleport good. a unit who's already in combat to another side of the map to ca- uh, capture an objective yeah. is pretty... It's, it sounds like like an obvious thing. Because when I think about a monolith, I think about Dawn of War, and they could just do that yeah. anyway. They could just teleport units Absolutely. around the map for the most part anyway. It's like... Oh. Yeah. Absolutely, it makes sense because yeah. that's kind of what they're for, mm. isn't it? You know, I mean, they've got loads of other stuff going for them as well, but that is the big one, the Eternity Gate. Basically, it's a re- yeah, it's brilliant. It's a really good um, little ability that one. Yeah, my my uh, hobby for my hobby challenge for the year is to either get a Bane Blade or a Monolith and paint mm. it up this year because I think that would Bloody be quite a, wow. a good challenge to do because it's a big so... piece as well. That's so much better than yeah. the one I've accidentally set myself to do. Which is, oh yeah, uh, oddly enough, mine's cheaper than yours. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> oh god, yeah. I had a look on eBay, yeah. and uh, every single one of those uh, fourth ed metal night goblins goes for about a five or each. I don't know why you hate yourself. Oh, you know, they're just so good. 
some people cut themselves in the shower. Gruff goes on eBay and buys incredibly rare, hard to find minis. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but they just look great. Don't they? Oh yeah, they're so good, mm. so fun. Yeah. Um, so expensive. So very. I mean, it means that. Oh, a unit. you know what you should do, Gruff. You mm. should ask Big D if he's got any. Big he's D, do you, do do you have any uh, fourth ed metal Kev Walker night goblins? If so, he probably I'll, does. I'll, I'll come around and do naughty things to you for them. He yeah. found some uh, <laughs> some really nice metal minis in his uh, home today, <laughs> which he's put on the Discord. If you want to have yeah. a look at them, yeah. Right. Everyone should join the Discord. The Discord's great. Discord, Discord's yeah. lovely. We have a person with a swan as a. Uh, as a picture, and that that always that just cartoon, makes me happy. Is it a real swan or a cartoon? It's a cartoon swan? swan, cartoon swan. It's, okay, that, it's more. It's it's kind of swan. Then it's not an evil swan. Uh, oh. it, it it looks very angry. It looks like a swan that will knife you. I, mm. I will always a take swan. a cartoon swan over a real swan, though. Why? Mm. A real swan. A real swan hates. It does, but a cartoon know. swan <laughs> isn't real. <laughs> right. You know the you know the common misconception that a swan can break your arm. Right. Oh, no, that's Thanks. bullshit. Yeah, absolute bullshit. Yeah. Swan comes at you, you snap but, its neck. That's sad. Mm. <laughs> the, now, the... if you said that about a giraffe, a giraffe could snap your arm, I'd be like, yeah, I can see that. Absolutely. I can see that. Yeah, they're big. Absolutely. You know, the uh, if, a giraffe, if a giraffe comes out the water at you because you've stolen its bread, you're doomed. Yeah, there's something going wrong there, yeah, isn't yeah. there? And also, uh, if you kill a giraffe, the um, the Queen's Royal Guard won't come and arrest you. Um, police will come and arrest you, but not the Queen's Royal Guard. I really don't like it where they say if you're not allowed to attack an animal if or defend yourself if you're being attacked by an animal. It's like what? If if a swan or like a goose attacks you, you're not allowed to punch it in the face. Come on, <laughs> that's well, not fair. No, let's be honest, it no, started like the goose, it. The only way the legally deserve... you're allowed to do that is if you can punch its beak in such a way that it spins around its head, Daffy Duck style. <laughs> Yes, maybe a challenge worth trying, I suppose. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Right. That, hang on. Does that mean if you punch, <laughs> if you killed the goose and you took its beak, could you? Would you have to like wear as like a trophy around your neck? Like uh, you know how war bosses like get human skulls or like other like space marine helmets, or you could get like a queek backpack and have like duck bills all over your back on on the spikes. Is it wrong that I just had this mental image of Dolph Lundgren in Universal Soldier with a necklace full of duck beaks? <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, should we get on then? Should we? Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah, we? Yeah. Let's, after that, yes. <laughs> half an hour of arsing about, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. the fluffies, <laughs> um, there are multiple categories, and what we are going to do this year, in a slight difference from the years gone by, is instead of starting with the 40k. Uh, best AOS and all that type of thing, we're going to start with things like the community commander and build up. Brilliant. So, with that being said, then we are going to begin the the fluffies with the community commander award. The community commander award is a an award given to people who have gone above and beyond. They've done things out in the world which has got you interested, has got you happy. Mm -hmm. um, it's different from the best YouTube best um, uh, podcast style awards because this is more about the person rather than the the product. And as a result, we've got some real interesting little takes here. Um, I'm going to start, of course, okay. with the bullshit. Uh, <laughs> the batshit, which uh, we have, quoth the hobbyist, fuck my life. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting that in the batshit. <laughs> putting that in the batshit. I am not letting people. When you say when you say me, do you mean the person who wrote it, me, no, or no. do you mean me as in you? As in me, as in Mister Adam Nichol. Uh, okay, okay. Right. I am. I am not letting myself get voted for on this. So I'm putting myself in the batshit. Um, uh, what else have we got? The raven that stares at me from outside my house when I'm busy getting dressed. Never more, bitch. <laughs> Actually, did it, did it? Does that mean that person made a deal with the Raven, and uh, it's like the fall of the House of Usher, and they're slowly coming to to take them one by one? <laughs> I, I think it's more like the the deal is that the Raven gets to sit there and just, you know, act like animated General M. Bison and just watch this person get undressed. I'm not sure I'd enjoy like uh, sitting on the toilet, like eyes to eyes with the crow while pooing. I don't think I think that would put me off. I'll be honest. Oh, would you not just get really into it though, and just like focus entirely on the crow and just see who blinks first? 
I, it isn't. It's, it's not really my kink. I'm not really an exhibitionist while pooping. I'm afraid. I like to poop in private. A man's toilet is his throne, and I like to do it privately so I can scheme <laughs> like Smeagol. Uh, <laughs> Funnily enough, another bullshit here is Gollum. Oh. Uh, <laughs> As in the video game? I don't oh, know. God. I don't know. That was pretty um, bad. <laughs> and my favorite one, of course, here is that Fabius Bile. He watches me. So, <laughs> probably a lot, yeah. lot of watching, a lot of watching. The real so, one or the clone? Uh, who knows? Uh, uh, oh, and Jared uh, from Subway. There's another one. Oh no! <laughs> well, I hope you're above age. If you are, you won't be interested. <laughs> allegedly. Uh, uh, and my buddy Sixton for joining me at the community center most weeks. Huh. So, um. This basically got into two people very, very quickly, um, mm -hmm. funnily enough. Um, so at number three, Kirioth, which yeah. uh, surprising, actually. Um, mm -hmm. At number two, Calidors and Sunny on what are you painting this week, or what are you painting next, I should say. Um, I'm hoping I've got that name right. And at number one, we have, drum roll, please. <laughs> Whip and Snipe. Um, yeah. A lot of people yeah. have come out for Whip and Snipe on this with yeah. a grand total of 42% of the votes. Everything went to Whip I'm and not Snipe. Surprised. I'm not surprised. They've been doing great work, you know, and obviously, you know, they've, they've been keeping it up through a really difficult patch. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, what are the... Uh, all, power, all power to them. They've been, they've been great. The, one of the uh, things here is that uh, Snipe and Wib, because who else put out a ghost hunting video this week, uh, this, this yeah. year? Which... Yeah, it's true. It's true. <laughs> who else did that? Just fair enough. Yeah, so uh, well done, Snipe and Wib. You guys have, I think this is like the third year in a row. I was going to say, they, they've won a lot, haven't they? Because, they well, to be honest, they are really good. You know? Well, they're a really positive um, part of the, the community. Force. Yeah. They are a positive force, which is great. And the, it's nice to see. They don't take it all too seriously either, and I think that's the other thing. That's, that's part of it, right? That is part of it. I mean, th there's a lot of the, the YouTube channels that take it way too seriously, mm -hmm. right? Um, and these guys are just fun. They're just real fun. Don't get me wrong, they love it. They have, you know, they have a real love for the hobby, but they know it's a hobby, which is great. Yeah, yeah, which is uh, big. Swing and D says, "What are you painting now?" That's uh, that's where uh, Color Doors and Sunday are from. So yeah, I mean, so they've done really, really well for themselves here. Um, so uh, well done to Snipe and Web. You guys have absolutely blown that one out of the water. Um, yeah, and I do have to. At the end of each of these, I'm going to just point out a something that is inside the. Um, uh, the categories, but I'm you're not going to put them in the bullshits because I want you all to pay attention to these lines as they come out, right? And this is a one single person has written once upon a website loading. Oh, here we go. So, just okay, just and I, I recognize that, that. So that was Percaic Meter. It's fucking the Raven, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Yeah, someone's done the Raven in in, <laughs> in fluffy terms, right? <laughs> Oh, right. Okay. So, well done to Sniper and Wib for winning the Community Commander Award. Well, I think the third year running, um, those guys have been doing absolutely amazing. So, we're yeah, going to move. I mean, Sorry. Fantastic stuff. Fantastic stuff. Very pleased. So, we're going to go into one here, which is going to be a really interesting, um, which is the Misstep of the Year Award for Worst oh. Decision and or Moment. Oh. I think we, we all have... Probably the same two in mind. Well, there's a reason why uh, two, there's two of them, and both of them are round mm. about the same amount of percentage with only one what or two percentage. In, uh, what a surprise. Yeah, okay, right. So I'll, I'll hit the batshits first. Mm -hmm. Now, before I go into this, I just want to say I have ummed and ahed about actually giving this any form of um, of answer. But I've decided okay. I'm going to go. I'm going to let it slide. I'm going to let it have it because it it's. Mm, but I apologise in advance. So, um, okay. in the batchets we have only hands. Enough said. <laughs> uh, um, 
uh, to do Epstein's Island, which okay, that's fair enough. Uh, that misstep is yeah, yeah, that could be accounted as a misstep. All right. I mean, it, it's it's a large. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a bit more than a misstep, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I just actually thought of a. I'm not going to say it now. No. The COVID inquiry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Britain in 2023. Accurate. And oh my god, the watermelon that survived Liz Truss going forward and starting a brand new journey as a TV comedian. <laughs> it wasn't a watermelon, it was a cabbage. It was a lettuce. A lettuce, yeah. It was a lettuce, yeah. So, I don't know. I don't know. Um, uh, right. Um, so, basically, there are two things here, which is the new website and Fulgrim. Yeah. Which do you Fulgrim, guys yeah. think comes in as the winner of the Misstep of the Year award? Probably the website, because it's more general, mm-hmm. you know? It's, more, it's, it's something that was generally disliked um the fulgrim was more personal <laughs> uh andy what's uh what do you think website or fulgrim uh logic would say probably the the website because it affects more people uh mm-hmm. while mm, that's fulgrim doesn't yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I i could easily see fulgrim being the answer as well to mm-hmm. be fair so with 46 percent of the votes Woo! it's fulgrim Ah, oh, with forty-seven yeah. percent of the votes oh. is the website. So it was close. Yeah, I mean, like negligible. Right, they were basically level pegging. Absolutely, yeah. Um, Interesting. And but they were <laughs> they were problems. They were problems, and some of them remain problems. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, outside of that, of course, there is batch painting many and a few. No, actually, I've got that one in the wrong order. Sorry, my apologies, I've got that in the wrong order. So, um, mm-hmm. it actually stands as once upon a website loading, uh, my wallet contents, the site was goading. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'll uh, I'll add I'll add to it for the, each one. Um, right then. I can't believe how bad this new website is still. Oh, it's, it's ghastly. No, it's it's awful. It is pretty bad. And you, you know what it's also hard. kind of feeds into this as well? Uh, end in the death. I hear people had issues getting onto the website with end in the death. So yeah. And you can filter that down to, again, uh, the website being crap. Website yeah, being crap. Yeah. Scalpers being... It was being fine a... before. It wasn't good, but it was fine before. No. I could use it. All they needed to do was tweak it, couldn't they? Yeah. You know, they just had to, like, tweak it a little bit. But this is awful yeah no it is it's it's really bad and that the, there's no um there's no defending it at all it was a very poor decision that should not have been just started you know the the fact is that yeah that that website would have cost a lot of money and it is not worth mm-hmm. no not worth it at all and no. you know be there's good ideas in the mm-hmm. website but they're very badly implemented badly implemented yeah, yeah that's it on a personal level, I am more pissed off about Fulgrim. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. yeah, yeah. On a personal level. Yeah. As for the um, uh, the end of the Death Volume Three Limited ed- Editions, they uh, <laughs> oh. there's a lot of stuff going on there that uh, I can kind of get into very quickly if you if you fancy it. Yeah, it's 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 more than Games Workshop though, isn't it? That that is a problem yeah. with retail yes. at the moment, isn't it? The way it works, same, it happens across. The same board. thing happened with the latest PlayStation release. You know, PlayStation. Yeah, it took forever to be able to get one. Well, play, like, still, PlayStation as well happened during COVID, unfortunately. So yeah. distribution was terrible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a limited item. It was just limited in the sense that that's all they could produce at the time. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But uh, as I say, it it. It's a it's a problem that exists in a much larger scale, and it's until yeah. something can be done about bot buying and scalpers, mm-hmm. um, there isn't much you can do because the idea of a limited edition is it's limited. And I don't agree with the way that the Q system works in any way. I don't think that's defendable in any way, shape, or form. But I also see that it is a limited um, release that has to be limited to make it limited. And... Mm-hmm. Once you start getting to a certain number, it stops being limited. 
Yeah, it's yeah. it's a it's a problem where I don't think there's any easy solution. Um, I, th- well, I think well, the only know, solution that we can do is just don't buy from them, I, which is hard. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. But it's the only thing that you on a ground level consumer mm-hmm. kind of basis you can do. If you oh, want to affect it, would. don't do it. Yeah. yeah oh, the, the problem is there are yeah. enough people who yeah. do, unfortunately. The other thing you can do, the other thing you can do is shame the fuckers into oblivion. You know, it's it's create a culture where it's I don't just know. Not- I don't think I, I don't think people who do this have much shame. To be honest, no, they don't. So you they can shame them, but, but they just go, they flip the bird at you and go, like yeah. It. You know, they don't like it. Did you actually see? They were like, in the wake of the PS5 thing, there were like articles from these wankers where yeah. they were whining <laughs> about the fact that everyone was having a go at them. It's like, well, yeah. Yeah. Well, in the. You are wankers. You are bad people. <laughs> in the aftermath of um, of this, of the end and the death, there were people sharing out Discord uh, screenshots. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there are Discords out there that exist purely for people, for scalpers, to see when something is mm-hmm. coming up that they can make money on. And, you yeah, know, they rent yeah. out bots for a couple of hours, buy 30 copies. You know, who the hell is buying 30 copies of something that's 50 quid? Fuck knows. Um, and then, you know, you're making a 300%. And that's the, the point of the Discord is you buy this, you can make a 300%, um, uh, what you call it, um, profit on it. And, you know, that that's just how capitalism works. You know, the, yeah, uh, yeah, pretty I'm much. Really, yeah, I'm yeah. going to on this one. Uh, well, that or change our entire economic model and dump late stage capitalism for the shit show. Well, is. That's going to happen anyway. <laughs> it's going to happen automatically. We either dump it and get something better, or we just let it decline. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Into where it, whatever you know dystopian morass it's going to become. <laughs> Absolutely. And in the case of here, the only way around this is to do print on demand. You know the the mm-hmm. the problem there is you've got to wait 180 days. I mean, and the other. I mean, yeah, but you would get your product. Yeah. Regulate markets, you know. Legislate, regulate the fucking markets. Absolutely, absolutely. But then, how do you regulate something that isn't actually a market? It's just people. You yeah. know, it, as I say, this is a really complex situation. It's not as simple as Games Workshop fucked up. I mean, they did with the website and the queue system and that type of thing. But then, Ten Thread's queue system worked. So you mm. know it. It's a hard one, and I understand why people are angry, absolutely, because if you have been getting limited editions of, you know, the entirety of the Horus Heresy, Siege of Terror, and End in the Death, and this is the last one, you know, you could... It sucks. Oh, good God, I can Mm, absolutely understand the the despondency that would come around from that. Yeah, Yeah, that's shit. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's it's a very complex situation with a lot of moving parts to get into, and, um... I am neither bright nor economically minded enough to get into it. <laughs> so instead, I'm going to get into the What Else Are You Playing Award for non-GW game of 2023. I have accidentally written 2022, and nobody has called me on my shit. So, uh, <laughs> whoopsie. <laughs> um, so in the bullshits, uh, we've got... Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, no, there's no bullshits in this one. Um, yeah. No bullshit. No, wow, that's no a batshits. I think all of these, well, unless Marvel Crisis Protocol is a batshit, but I don't think it is. I think that's an actual thing. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, there's three that uh, really stepped out of the shadows, uh, which is kind of a fun one. Um, I'm going to give a little uh, mention to Orkborg. I don't know if that's a batshit or not, but. Orkborg is great, so we should all play Orkborg. Mm. It's like Space Hulk, but orcs. Um, and it's super punky. It's like massively punk. It's great. Uh, the three that have stood out are Turnip 28, mm-hmm. uh, Necropolis, which a lot of people have thanked me for for getting them into. Yeah. I think that's meant to be sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> and Battletech. Oh, all right. Mm. Which, in this day and age, I did not expect Battletech to be uh, getting this much love. So, wh- what do you guys think? What do you think takes it? Oh. I don't really know. I'm not well. I'm not into mm-hmm. you know the the area enough to to make an informed judgment on that one. I, w- I would only say Battletech because it's the only games the other game system I see being posted on the Discord. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So Necropolis came in third. Mm-hmm. 
Battletech came in second. Ah. Oh. Turnip took it with less than 1%. <laughs> Damn. So it just slid in there, barely. Literally, literally wow. slid in there. Um, Turnip 28 and the city of Swill continues to be an absolute <laughs> juggernaut. Oh, my God. Honestly, Great. just read up on Turnip. It's so much fun. Is Guns uh, of Heck? Hegate, is that it? Yeah, Hecate. 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 Okay, because I, I, I was just like trying to find the images desperately online quickly, and I'm like, I hope I got the right place. <laughs> yep. Uh, so to continue the little thing that's carrying on here, once upon a website loading, my wallet contents the site was goading with a pensive stare and a shaky hand. <laughs> so, this You're trying to paint eyes. <laughs> oh, we'll see. We'll, we'll see where this goes. Um, so, moving on, then we've got the best YouTube. Someone's rocking their archaic meter there. I've got to say, well done. <laughs> the... I mean, I know you're just copying the Raven, but even so, <laughs> bravo. <laughs> oh, don't worry, this goes places. Um, best YouTube or podcast award. Uh, it's quite... us! Yay! <laughs> we did it, boys. <laughs> Pat ourselves on the back. Uh, we are in here. Tap all we win. We are in here, and uh, we have. Uh, I have put us into the bat shits. So that's, that's, that's fair. That's fair. That's where we belong. Yeah. Um, the bat shits are arch. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> which Jesus Christ! That's, yeah, right. I'm fairly sure that's going to get us into trouble. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, if the emperor had a speech to podcast machine. Oh, <laughs> that's just that's still sad that that's not around anymore. It is, uh, uh, but he did it to himself. Um, wow. No. Uh, so the entire story of that is, um, he said that he was stopping it because Games Workshop were going after people on YouTube. That mm -hmm. going after YouTube people never actually happened. He just said it was. Right. Um, but he then took the Patreon money and went off to do his own thing. Um, um, another one of them that is mm. happening so much on YouTube at the moment. Yeah, um, and he uh, he said he was going to do his own stuff. But as I understand it, he's also now got kids and things, so it could just be that he's, he's packed it all in. So mm. I'm not, wow. I am not coming down on any side on that one. There's just the facts. It's just sad. Right. Interesting. Yeah, it is sad. You can say that, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, because uh, that, was, that was a great little series. great, yeah. Um, so, in the actual, um, in the runners up, we've got the Herdstone podcast, which I've never heard. So, I'm going to have to look in that one. It's the uh, peachy one in there. It the is, yeah. Peachy, yeah, yeah. yeah we, oh, we're going to get to that. Don't worry. Yeah, um, so. yeah. <laughs> uh, we've got Oculus Imperialis. So, I'm just going down the line here. Adeptus Ridiculous. And the weekly, what are you painting right now? Mm -hmm. In the tops, we've got Kirioth, Wib and Snipe, and mm -hmm. the painting, the peachy painting phase. It's, Ooh, it, that's hard to it, is, it has been called painting phase, the painting phase, painting with peachy and peachy's show. So. I don't know why, but is is the logo for the show just like a peach, just like the top of a peach with little? You can see the little the little bits of the peach hair on the top, and it's just mm -hmm. named the peach because that's what I do for the logo for the show. Absolutely, <laughs> leading to the peach aspect for the the iconography. Yeah. I would oh absolutely superimpose yeah. Peachy's face onto a peach. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> like the curious orange, but a peach. <laughs> the painting peach. It's hard to call. This one's hard to call. I think I I, I can't. Yeah, I can't distinguish which one would be top. I go with the peachy one. For, if it was my choice, I go with the peach one because mm -hmm. I, I I like I like that crew. No, it's not just peachy. I like the other guys on that show as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, the, the one of them's from Cumbria, so that automatically makes him the best is, thing is, out there. Is that the barber? No, he's from uh, Liverpool. He's Scouse. Oh, um, I, I like him. But no, the, the the other guy, he's from like Windermere or somewhere. And that's like automatically. That doesn't. That's not a real place. Listen to him, Windermere. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't exist. I, I have been to Windermere. Me multiple times, thank you very much. It's uh, yeah, so have I on LSD. <laughs> Abby went to a university there, believe well, it or not. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, the winner uh, is Peachy's Painting Phase, and I'm gonna, call, I'm gonna call it that from now on because that's such a what's it really called? Uh, the Painting Phase. 
Okay, thank you. I, I need to find it on Google quickly. <laughs> but I, I refuse to call it anything other than the peachy painting face because the peachy painting because face. somebody called it that, and that three Ps is such a pleasant way of speaking. Peachy painting face, <laughs> it's so nice. It's so nice. So, continuing the stuff that's happening outside of the, uh, <laughs> the categories. Mm -hmm. Once upon a website loading, my wallet contents the site was goading. With a pensive stare and a shaking hand, I clicked the basket and spent a grand. Oh, no. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Very good. You got the box of five fla Necron flayed ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One whole box. Um, so we're going to move into now the big bad batshit award for most mad moment. Oh my god! Oh, interesting. Um, there's a couple. <laughs> there's things in here where I don't think there are any batshits. I think that this is just um, how people have responded to it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. All right. Yeah. But um, I'm going to say that one of the uh, answers here is. Um, Overall, how on the GW community site they shit post back to people, <laughs> which I don't think I've ever seen them do that, but fair enough. No, I haven't <laughs> seen that either. Uh, no, I haven't seen that. Uh, right, so I'll give you a couple of the answers here because some of these are quite good. Bolt gun, because why not make a pixel based 40k boomer shooter? Fuck it, it really is. That is a batshit mm. moment, it's brilliant. But it's a batshit moment. I, yeah. don't, I don't know where that came from, but wow! No, you know? it's not a perfect game, but it's a it's a really no, nice nostalgic any... letter. Yeah, it's it's, it's good for fun, what it is. Yeah, it is good fun. Is it their best release this year for, get, uh, for not, a video not, game? Not the best. No, Rogue Trader might be the uh, best. Video th this isn't the. Year. This is just the big bad batshit. So this. No, is just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, that was just me thinking out loud for oh, another right, okay. thing. Uh, we also have Fulgrim the Fragile, <laughs> bringing oh, yeah. back Urshuran. That that's huge. Mm. That's a massive one. Uh, oh no, this is definitely a batshit. Sweeping away the thousand suns. <laughs> 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 Although I, I think that's actually part of something else. Ironically, right. it's the one thing that both space walls and the thousand suns are afraid of, isn't it? It's a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, new tyranids, uh, heads in boxes in oh, Cities of Sigma. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Blood Bowl 3 trailer for the Lizard Men. I almost sprayed drink all over my computer seeing the, seeing the Slan Mage Priest in his drinking cup. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. So, yeah, that's... Uh, what, 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 are you, what are you thinking? What are we thinking? Oh, God. Is it popular? More... Is it Usheron who would be the popular vote? Because that's pretty big, right? Mm -hmm. That was pretty big. That was quite... Uh, wasn't it? You yeah. Know, that was a moment. That sounds like what the most people would probably like unify and say, mm -hmm. I think, but I could be wrong. It was what certainly like one of the most surprising moments. Mm -hmm. And get to see the mini too, which is a big boy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I go Usheran. I'm very much tempted to get myself an Usheran at some point just to paint. Because oh, yeah. it looks nice. It's gorgeous. Maybe yeah, have like a spare 60 to 80, because I'm sure that's how much you'll be. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. yeah. Uh, easy, yeah, easy. like Primark level. Oh, yeah, you know. yeah. Uh, right, so, yeah, I'll, I might as well just give you the answers then. It's Bolt Gun. Mm, go for it. A Bolt oh, Gun. really? Because okay. uh, yeah. uh, nice. um, a lot of people saying here that uh, actually having something that feels like a late 90s PC game just feels great. Um, people yeah. say it's not a perfect game, but it doesn't matter because the, uh, the joy of it just carries you through with the bits that don't work. Yeah, just right. a lot of people saying that uh, it is just rather good. Um, that's wonderful. I'm really pleased that it's gone down so mm, well. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so, once again, to continue this little poem that continues <laughs> inside here uh, Once upon a website loading, my wallet contents, the site was goading. With a pensive stare and a shaking hand, I clicked the basket and spent a grand. Those dark days for parcels, I did wait. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it continues. Right then, shall we get into the best new concept award? Sure. Yeah. So yeah. this is uh, all the stuff that is, um, well, just stuff that's brand new. Uh, you know, mm. the that totally not a perishing Imperial Guard tank. Hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Neurolictors. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, 
Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we've got uh, new electors, Lionel Johnson redeeming oh, the fallen wow. and dabbling on thousand years of Dark Angel history, like the original yeah. gangster he is, and he's got good character development too. Tenth uh, mm -hmm. Ed Forty K making it easier to play. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's a big one. That's a big one. <laughs> making it more accessible and easier to play. Yeah. Uh, the new Tyranids. Cities of Sigma and translucent plastic for the army of the dead. Well, I think Cities of Sigma, surely. Mm -hmm. Andy, any uh, any thoughts? Well, forty uh, k being like the the large mm -hmm. populace of what game, uh, GW people play, Games mm -hmm. Workshop people mm -hmm. play. I'd say maybe the the ease of playing tenth edition. Mm -hmm. That might be it, yeah. So if I said to you that Lionel Johnson came in at number three, mm -hmm. 10th Ed 40K came in at number two, Ooh. and the Cities of Sigma came in at number oh. one. That's really cool, actually. It's nice to see something from AOS making that kind of impact. Mm. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, That's really good. It is rather, rather nice that... Uh, yeah, the Cities of Sigma have actually managed to find so much love out there in the world. I mean, I'm yeah. not going to lie and say there was the, uh, the you know, there are stone cold winner in this. There is very little in between them, you know. Um, mm. It's also worth saying that I've got roughly about 300 um, entries into this. Yeah, about roughly 300 people have uh, taken part in this this year. So you know, it's it's an interesting. Is that more than slice. last year out of interest. I would have to go back and look. Mm. I'm not entirely okay. sure. Um, I wondered, yeah. Yeah, I should have really got that. Those. That's not like me to forget to do something like that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> foolish Adam! Foolish Adam! Cities of Sigma are not a beginner-friendly painter army, are they? No, not even slightly. <laughs> oh, uh, my mate James has been doing them, and he's been absolutely banging it out the side of the box, like just really, really cool. But it's slow going. Hard. Yeah, I'm not surprised. There's so much detail. Maybe too much detail in some places. They are very beautiful. They are nice, I mean, yeah. Like, wow. <laughs> um, right, so continuing. Oh, quick question. Because uh, yep. you, you made James has them. Are the, the, the flags, the symbol on the center of them, are those transfers or not? I assume they probably should be, but might not be. I don't know, and I will find out. Okay, thank you. I'm interested. I shall ask him. Yes, I shall yeah. ask him. Um, so, continuing the little poem... Once again, once upon a website loading, my wallet contents the site was goading. With a pensive stare and a shaking hand, I clicked the basket and spent a grand. Those dark days for parcels, I did wait and hoped that my need, it would sate. <laughs> it never does. No, no, it never does. No. Never does. No. no. Uh, moving on then, we've got the Childhood Excitement Nostalgia Award. Now, this award is for something that you see that made you go, woo! Ooh. Um, this is not exactly a hard fought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, do, do I get into this? Yeah, I think I will. Um, on, so then. one of the entries into this, it started off super strong and you can tell the point when it got released. <laughs> Because oh. I was watching this, uh, obviously, you know, every couple of days I was going on looking to see what was winning and what was uh, losing, just to mm -hmm. you know, keep an eye on uh, how things changed. And a lot of stuff, It what was an early winner ended up being the winner. So in this, the old world, up until the end of December, <laughs> was looking at being the winner. Right. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. It then yeah. dropped into third place. At about, right. at about what time did it drop to third place? About the, was it about when prices were announced? It, yeah. Mm, <laughs> mm, it was really, really interesting to watch every few days. Just as like, oh, no. it hit a certain oh, point wow. and then stopped getting votes. It was really interesting. <laughs> be, and it was what, to be honest, this is what the marketing department should be doing, isn't it, at Games Workshop? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it, it's like, you know, the votes were, they were like, just boom, 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 until the point where those prices were released. Um, but, you know, the It was the, the day that the um, uh, the leak dropped with the prices on it, mm. and it just stopped getting votes. Like, oh, stopped. Wow. It was so fascinating. 
And I, so nobody else in the world probably finds this as infinitely interesting as I do, but it was a moment <laughs> of just like, ooh. And I didn't really want to what mention it at the time because I don't want to you know, muddy the waters and that, that sort of prejudice the, the vote and everything. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, that's so interesting. But it was, it was as an indication of like fan reaction. It's really fascinating, that is. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. It, it means that people were really excited for it until the prices until, came out and people just went, yeah. nope. Ah, no. <laughs> um, and in the batch, we have, I don't get excited much these days. <laughs> Fair uh, enough. Um, I don't We're know. All on, all, but, you know. Oh yeah, I don't know if Space Marine Company Heroes boxes are batshit or not. I I looked it up, and that seems to be a, a the Japanese blind boxes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So don't know. Um, right then. So uh, the answers we've got here are for the Childhood Excitement Award. The top three: mm. the Lion. Yeah. C- yeah. Cities of Sigma. Hmm. Mm. And Terminators. Oh, it has to be Terminators, doesn't oh, it? Yeah, <laughs> Terminators were big, especially when you big. kind of can wrap up the the um the Dark Angels Terminators in there as well, if you wanted. Yeah, uh, yeah absolutely. It has to be Terminators. I, I, yeah, it's got to be the Terminators. Otherwise, I would have said maybe Cities of Sigma. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. But then you said Terminators. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I will say Bretonia got a decent uh, run of uh, votes as well. No Tomb in, Kings, in, just oh. just Bretonia. Oh, just Bretonia, not the Tomb Kings. Uh, racism, yeah. I see. All right, bit, yeah. Co- I'm a bit sad about that. A couple of Tomb King answers, but more Bretonian than the word Tomb Kings, which Lame. I thought was interesting. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, um, and to give you the answer, I'm just going to read this one out uh, verbatim because mm-hmm. it's it's quite good. I'm so happy that they didn't fuck up the Terminators. Don't <laughs> fix what isn't broken. So yeah, mm-hmm. the Terminators took it. The Terminators yeah. took the childhood excitement and nostalgia award. I bet they did. Was, it, you, was it significant as well? Fairly, yeah. Uh, about yeah, what it might be nine percent difference between that and the Cities of Sigma. <laughs> That's- which, that's significance. That's a big lead. Yeah, yeah. Should they do um, a plushie of a Terminator? I reckon. Yes. So. Yes. Yeah. A plushie. Yeah. Of a Terminator. Well, a soft Terminator. Yeah, a little cuddly Terminator. Only if it's got lightning claws for that maximum bulk. It's to be floppy and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, uh, right. Are these still quick build at the moment? Uh, can you get them in the the individual posing kind of stuff yet? I think they're still quick builds. I don't quick think the, builds. Uh, okay. Yeah, I don't think the other ones are out yet. Um, right. But my god, are they good minis? I mean, obviously, I've got them in the Leviathan box, mm-hmm. and they're amazing. Yeah, well, they are. They're just good. They're just generally good. Um, mm-hmm. I'm uh, big boys as well. They they've beefed them up a little bit. Mm-hmm. I'm annoyed that the uh, the Deathwing box set come is got for pre order this week because mm-hmm. it's too close to Christmas and Joseph's birthday. So there's no <laughs> yeah, way in hell I can afford that. No. But uh, oh, well, we'll we'll see. There's there's no such thing as FOMO. That's just being patient. Uh, <laughs> well, unless it's a limited edition item. Yeah, well, if it's limited, oh, limited edition, they can get, <laughs> they can get <laughs> fucked. Uh, <laughs> Damn. Uh, so, once upon a website loading my wallet contents, the site was goading with a pensive stare and a shaking hand. I clicked the basket and spent a grand. Those dark days for parcels, I did wait and hope my need it would sate. Oh no, I've lost the next bit. Oh, shit. Have you lost no. the thread? <laughs> what the hell? And on a cold and dreary morn. <laughs> oh, that's just that's, an, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not finished yet. Still still got a, a while to go. Um so next up we have the best audio book or audio production. Mm. Um batch it's Sonic the Comic the Podcast. Uh, that yeah. Uh, basically for having Good. fantastic jingles. Yeah. I just being a great podcast, by the way, highly recommended. If you're ah. a kid in the nineties, a geeky kid in the nineties, it's just a great podcast because it it recalls it. It's so weird, isn't it, Adam? Yes. Yeah. It you like it really does get to the nub of what it was like being a kid in the nineties. I have that fucking fruit pastel song in my head every single day. <laughs> It will not leave. 
<laughs> God, best oh my have God. One right now. You know, the, the best, best bit, the best bit right is David's diary, right? Oh my the God. Diary. It's the best. Fucking I look hell. forward to that every single time because it's like, this is like universal experience. It's like, I so was like that yeah. at that, you know, oh, utterly brilliant. It, stuff. It's painful just how on point yeah. that fucking diary on is. On point. Yeah, it's like this is the experience of being a UK geeky boy mm-hmm. in the nineties. Oh man, it's honestly uh, that entire sequence where Dave first got the internet. Those oh, three weeks so of diary good. entries, the I was creased, I was crying. So good, <laughs> and he's he's just talking about people using their web names and stuff, and oh yeah, I was creased. It's, it was it's fantastic yeah fantastic oh amazing uh but yes uh also uh we have the last church read by me so it <laughs> <laughs> comes up every single time um, it's you know me? Me every time isn't it it's you no. you do it every year no, no it's not do you, do you know why it's not me why? Right, because I get pissed off every week when the last church has mm-hmm. the most views. Uh-huh. <laughs> every week, mm-hmm. 153 it got this week. Right, not bad. Yeah, that's pretty it's, good. It is. It is. That's YouTube but, for you, though. Isn't it? But it means that the rest of the stuff that I'm putting on isn't getting that <laughs> levels. Yeah, yeah. It's YouTube for you. That, yeah, I read the last church nearly 10 years ago now. Yeah. <laughs> Just, oh, YouTube. God. Fucking damn it. Um, <laughs> and to be honest, it's not even the best one I've done. The best one I've done is Deathwing. <laughs> Just, yeah, I can honestly say that Deathwing was the one that I, you know, really put the most work into into getting yeah. that done. And it doesn't have a car horn, which I've accidentally recorded at one point <laughs> in the background. <laughs> well, oh, the no. church does have around about the 40 minute mark. Somebody just going beep beep in the background very quietly, but you can hear it, which I didn't know was there. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfuckers. Uh, right. Um, so, uh, <laughs> um, Cyphers Kane Vainglorious got a decent run, um, which mm-hmm, is a decent book, mm-hmm. but it comes down to two books. Can you okay. tell what these two books are? What these oh. two books are that are going head to head? Infinite and the Divine. Unfortunately, not. Oh, that, that is in here as a batch <laughs> it, to be honest. Yeah. Um, Infinite and the Divine. That deserves to be in every one. Mm-hmm. Any of the polls relating to the literature, yep. that deserves to be in it. Um, uh, also, is Infinite and the Divine the sitcom scripts? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and what was the other one? Isn't that just like Bottom with Robots? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Basically. Uh, and Infinite and Divine Married Unto Death. Uh, they're the, the other two mm-hmm. batch Um Yeah, but. Two books have sat here and they have gone head to head. Mm-hmm. End uh, of the death. Uh huh. End of the death. Yeah. yeah. So, what do you think the second book is? I don't know. I don't know. It's no the end of the death. So, oh, part end one of the part death. Two. Yeah, end of the death part oh, one and end of the death part two have absolutely fought uh, it out. Ah, uh, fair enough. Oh, yeah. brilliant. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. It makes uh, perfect sense. Of course they would be, wouldn't yeah. they? Um, End in the Death Part 1 takes it just uh, with End in the Death wow. Book 2. I think, in all honesty, if this had been up about a month earlier, yeah. um, it would have been probably level, to be honest with you. Oh, but there yeah. is a uh, 2% difference in the votes. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, End in the Death Part 1 takes it over End in the Death Part 2. Uh, Interesting. And to continue the tale that we're being told uh once upon a website loading my wallet contents the site was goading with a pensive stare and a shaking hand i clicked the basket and spent a grand those dark days for parcels i did wait and hope my hope that my need it would sate and on a cold and dreary morn i once again became blessed by corn (laughs) (laughs) Ah, right best book so this is the best book. Um, <laughs> in the batchets, we've yeah, got... We know what it is, don't we? In the batchets, we've got the new Transformers comic started hard and has not slowed down yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, hated, I hated that first issue. You, yeah. you, I, I haven't read any others apart from that first issue. No, I not, still haven't read them. Oh, you have. Not, yeah, I, I just looked them. at them and went, I don't, I don't know if I want to bother. I will give it that issue three is better. Oh, if I a lot. Uh, 
However, oh, yeah. the new Ultimate Spider-Man is fucking incredible. Just just putting that out there, right? If you want a comic out, uh, a new comic to read, Ultimate Spider-Man, it is immensely good. It's so good. Hmm. It oh my god! It I read it three times, like one after the other, just going <laughs> what? It is so damn good. Um, it's probably the first. Happy Spider-Man married with kids makes me very happy, and I don't know why. But Yeah, have they moved it on again like they did no. in the beginning of the Clone Wars so, way back when? Ult- no, um, so Ultimate Spider-Man, the Ultimate Universe Spider-Man, that came to an end years mm. ago um, with Peter Parker dying and uh, mm-hmm. Miles Morales mm-hmm. getting moved into the, the normal 616 universe. Yep. This is a follow-on from Ultimate Invasion, which is the Reed Richards of the Ultimate Universe, who is a bastard, Um He basically recreated the Big Bang, went back to the Ultimate Universe, stopped all the moments that made the superheroes, took over, became Mm. Lord of Earth in the Ultimate Universe, until the momentum of reality started creating, like, phantom superheroes, basically, to throw at him. Right. Right. So they're not real, but he has to have this big thing up to stop them from getting through into reality, Um, basically. There's more to it than that. Kang the Conqueror is involved mm-hmm. and stuff. Mm-hmm. So at the end is of this, that, Evil but... Reed Richards, the one from the um, Jonathan Hickman run from the alternate universe. Yes, uh, the uh, the the Maker. Uh, the Maker, that's his yep. name. Yeah, yeah, and he had the weird helmet. Oh, yep. I knew it would be him. He was a right cock. Oh, he tried to use him. Yeah, he, he because he's got Reed Richards' powers. He um, he moved his brain so he gets a headshot and he's fine. Uh... <laughs> it it's incredible. Um, so. At the end of that, the this like sixteen year old Tony Stark basically goes through time trying to recreate the heroes. He finds out all of them who are going to be oh. there and tries to recreate them. But it's not recreating them at the time they were going to be created. It's recreating them six months in the past. So mm-hmm. Sp- Peter Parker, he's married. He's got kids. He's married to MJ. He's got kids, and he's getting the mm-hmm. spider powers when he's like late twenties, early thirties. Oh, now that's much more interesting. Yes. That is much more interesting. Yeah, I like um, that. Uncle Ben's still alive because that never happened. Mm, um, sure. Yeah, the, he was a teenager when he went to live with them rather than being a, a, a little baby because his parents died later. Um, it's it's really interesting. And having a happy Spider-Man who is content yeah. with life is so good. Yeah, that sounds really interesting, it's, actually. I wouldn't mind giving that It's a superb. Go. It's absolutely superb. Um, I recommend anyone read it, because it, after the last two years of Spider-Man in mainline Marvel just being misery, mm. absolute <laughs> fucking misery. But not even well-written misery. No, it's... Like, it can be miserable if it was written well, but yeah. it's not. It was, yeah, yeah, that's it. it. It's, it's really bad. It's like, good God. Um, but yeah, anyhow, right uh best book best actual book best book the new transformers comic started had not slowed down uh anything by bernard cornwall um um do 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 do. uh anything by bernard Cornwall. i mean dan abnett because the ghost uh, ghost gaunt's ghost series are totally sharp in space um vainglorious gets a a bit of a run because the new cypher's cane book yeah, everyone loves a bit of Cypher's Kane. Uh, Is it not just ending the death part one or part two? And yeah, I was going to say yeah, and I was going to say it is obviously it's going to be the end of the death. Yeah, so it's like the biggest releases from Black Library for, for ages, yeah. ages. I mean, I was, what else is it going to? I was getting there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and yes, ending the death book one and book two in the top two slots. Now, which way around yeah. do you think it goes? Should the Orc book uh, have made it in there? Was the Orc book this year good? Um, it was, but not. I mean, this is this is you. Would you have put uh, it in the top runnings? Uh, either of you, if you read them. I mean, I haven't read them. I haven't read them. Uh, okay. I haven't read them. I would have probably. Would you put them in top billing for this year then, Griff? I would have put Gene Father in top billing, mm-hmm. and I would have put mm, me too, actually. Um. Hmm, what else? There was a couple out this year which I thought were absolutely fantastic. Um, and I'm just trying to remember. What... Do you have any off the top of your head, George, of books that you've read this year that you put in that haven't been mentioned that Griff said? 
Oh God, um, not off the top of my head. Mm. No, okay. Go back and have a have a have a look. Mm. Um, Temple of Silence was really really good. The Vorbis Conspiracy that would have been my book of the year, to be honest with you, mm. um, because that's a Warhammer crime series that's an anthology that starts with a void ship crashing into the hive, um, and it goes mm. through criminals as they deal with it. It goes through the um, Adep- uh, not the Adeptus Habites, whatever they're called, the the police. Um, mm-hmm. side of it. It goes through oh, uh, rescue workers as they're working on it. There's a short story in there about the rescue workers. Um, yeah, You get to see bits of the 40k universe you don't normally see. And the yeah, that's the payoff like for it that. is immensely satisfying. You know? There's a, even a sister a battle short story just running around by herself with no armor. Hmm. Um, it's really good. It's really, really good. And you get to see what the Cyber Mastiffs actually do. And <laughs> they're they're really fun. Oh, right. <laughs> uh, that, that would have been my... The very good art metal boys. Yes, they're fantastic. Um, but my overall book of the year, not including, uh, you know, for all books I've read this year, is uh, Muppets in Moscow, which is the story <laughs> of uh, trying to get Sesame Street into a Russian, uh, onto Russian TV in, in the uh, mid-90s. It's the only book I've ever read where a TV producer is put into a drum and sent out into scrublands to meet some gang bosses who then talk to him about the TV series he's making and if it instills good values. <laughs> it's great. But I mean, I did start rereading The Tales of Earthsea by Ursula oh, Kaylin yeah. and they deserve to be up there. They're amazing. Yes, they are very, very good. Amazing. I'm just trying to go look to see what else came out this year, which is... Uh, do, do, do. Blight Slayer was very good. Uh, Black Eyed Saint was yeah, it was all right. War Boss was fantastic. Um, oh, Bad Loon Rising came out this year as well, and that was very very good. Mm. Yeah. But now it, it comes down to End of the Death Part One and End of the Death Part Two. And does. what's interesting is that uh, it actually comes in three parts. So you've got End of the Death Part One. End and the Death Part uh-huh. 2, and a lot of people voted for mm-hmm. Siege of Terror, the End and the Death Books 1 and 2. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it, that makes mm. sense, because they are kind of, it's the same yeah. story, I know. Um, <laughs> yeah. But for this one, End and the Be- End and the Death Book 2 takes the win. Wow. So, yeah. Yeah, agreed, to be honest. It's 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 very good. It is. It's, it's ridiculously good. <laughs> it's very good. For a book of its size, yeah. And, you know, following on from another book of its size directly. And it, yet it just um, speeds through. I don't understand how a book that yeah, big speeds through. Just devoured mm. it. Devoured it. Never became boring. Didn't sound. No. At not any once. Point. It, it was very, It does very not good. lose momentum ever. It's insane. Nope. I don't. It does some great stuff as well. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, some of the. Say the uh, name. Like, you know what? Say yeah, it. And you know the big thing that it's building up to, which is the fight between. Mm-hmm. Horus and Sanguinius. It's really good. Yeah, it's brutal. I um, I'm looking forward to the third book coming out. I'm just going to blast through all three. I think back to back. Yeah, I mean, I and... the third one's going to actually be the big one. It's the hardest one mm-hmm. to land all this stuff. Yeah, all these strange unknowables that have been built up. Now, I I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, do we all feel that they're going to now start the scouring once this finishes? Oh, well, they're sense. going to have to, because there are certain yeah. stories that are still lingering after the Horus Heresy that, that finish in the scouring. Mm-hmm. Um, so the Iron Warrior stuff, the Iron Cage, all of that has to be done. Fabius Bile and the Emperor's Children, mm-hmm. um, all of that has to be done. Um, yeah, they're going to have to do the scouring. The to only make thing it I... make sense, they're going to have to do the scouring. The only thing I can think of, apart from doing that, is doing like Thunder Warrior stuff. And I don't think they, I think they want to do, I, they would do yeah. the scouring first. And then if they wanted to do Thunder yeah. Warrior stuff, they'd go back and do it last. I would yeah. like a break between the end of That's not happening. <laughs> GW, am, don't do that. <laughs> let, let me finish. I want a yeah. break between the end of the Death Part 3 coming out and the scouring beginning, right? And mm-hmm. I want one book whether it's an anthology book, a novel size book, or whatever, I want one book that goes right the way back to the Dark Age of Technology, and I want one story set in the Dark Age Dark Age of Technology yeah. before any of this. I want to see how fucking weird the, the universe was before any of this happened. Mm-hmm. 
read yeah that would be interesting that would be very interesting and i want dan Abnett to write it because he's the only one who seems to be allowed <laughs> to just get out there and get weird with 40k and just do whatever mm. he likes with the universe it seems oh yeah just yeah. like it's like they gave him free reign almost although very cleverly he kind of gave himself free reign with like the dynamic that he set up in the yeah. end of the death so yeah is that just because he's proven himself kind of thing i think so i think so yeah i think that might be it yeah but it's still surprising what they allow him to do. Yeah, I was, I was thinking about this earlier today. Um, yeah, I realized. Yeah, you got the in when Horus Heresy starts off. You've got the Interrex. You've got the Mega Arachnids, mm -hmm. which honestly, that's yep. one of the best fucking names of anything I've ever heard. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a lot of weird stuff out in the universe which 40k doesn't really touch on. And I like, like to imagine this because most of that stuff's been exterminated. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That... <laughs> Probably. Yeah. It's like, yeah, uh, wipe them out. Yeah. Outside of the Eisenhorn series, once again, Dan Abnett, uh, mm. having like the um, the Sarathai and, and stuff like that, mm -hmm. not a lot of weirdness gets explored. And I'd like to go back so before mm -hmm. any of this and just see what weird shit was out there. Yeah. Be fun. Yeah. You mm -hmm. could do stuff. Yeah. Won't happen. Definitely. No. Uh, no. <laughs> right, moving on then, we're going to get the rest of the uh, this little poem going. So, once upon a website loading my wallet contents, the site was goading with a pensive stare and a shaking hand. I clicked the basket and spent a grand. Those dark days for parcels, I did wait and hoped my need it would sate on a cold and on a cold and dreary morn. I once again became blessed by corn. World eaters galore fell from the box. <laughs> a bad box. Yeah. Uh, right then. Oh, that's a good box, that one. So now we're going to get into the big ones. So we're going to hit now the best 40k release. Ooh. Oh, wow. Uh, Terminators. Yeah, Terminators. <laughs> I, just, I just thought of that. Yeah, it's just, oh, it's Terminators, yeah. isn't it? Of course it is. Must be. Yeah. Um, not a lot in the way of bad shits in this one, unfortunately. Uh, um, they're taking their forty k seriously, are they? Well, the, the lion, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Was the dude got... that was for polisher? Was that last year? What was that? You know the little dude who polished the sword. <laughs> was he last year? <laughs> no, he he was this year. Last year. Oh, was, was he not in the bad? Was he not in the bad shits then? How is he not in the bad I shits? Was... I thought I he was know. older. No, no, I think I thought he was older than that. Yeah, he, he must have uh, been last year. Must have been last year. He must have been. Yeah, I mean, the only batch that's here, I've got. Uh, I bought myself a box, and all all that fell out were fingers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was like Hellbreak. He was twenty twenty two. Yeah, yeah, Big yeah. D says it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've also got uh, the Big Mac I had this morning. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it is. Big Mac. And uh, uh, black mold. Oh no. <laughs> Oh, get, no. get yourself a spray ASAP. Spray yeah, that down. Get some chlorine on that. Yeah. Um, uh, so the answers we've got here, and I'm not going to give you them in any real sense of uh, percentages. Leviathan box, Angron, mm -hmm. the Lion, mm -hmm. the Age of Darkness 30k box set, which I don't think that was this year, was it? The Age of Darkness box set. The Horus Heresy box. I'm sure that was last year. Maybe. Yeah, that must have been last year. Yeah, that must be a batch it. Uh, I didn't yeah. realize. Um, and the new Combat Patrol game mode. Great place to start. And sometimes you just don't feel like list building. <laughs> that was fair. That's not going to win. <laughs> I'm going to go for the Leviathan box. Set, Levi Leviathan makes sense, but that might have been thrown off by saying Leviathan instead of Terminators in Leviathan. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe I'll go with Angron. Yeah. I'll go with Angron yeah. because you've said Angron be and Angron's a good name. He, yeah, that's a great I'm model. happy if it is. Yeah, it's mm. good. What is it then? It's the 10th and 40k box. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I should, it is. should have just gone with Terminators. Mm. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's a really good set. I mean, what are you going to, you know, oh, yeah. what can you say? Absolutely. It's a great set. The worst thing about the Leviathan box set was the, uh, the cinematic that they gave it because it was poo compared to the yeah. 9th edition one. That was yeah. the only bad thing about that box set. In Although, my once you uh, hook it up to Metallica's um, uh, For Whom the Bell Tolls, it gets a lot better. Uh, <laughs> I, just, I like the storytelling in the ninth one way more. Yeah. It's just better paced. 
It is, it is. But once you make it into a music video to Metallica's For Whom the Bell Tolls, whilst also using the uh, World of Warcraft orchestral version <laughs> of Whom the Bell Tolls, um, <laughs> it gets really good. I'm not saying that I've done that, but there's a reason why I shouldn't be allowed near video editing software. I, uh, want, I want you two to guess how I would make the Leviathan cinematic better by one simple <laughs> move. <laughs> Knowing me, what would I change? Hmm. Put Undead in it? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> that, that would be funny, though. <laughs> um, undead Tyranids? Oh, there's a fun army idea, hmm. Andy. That'd be weird to do. Yeah. I don't know. They'd yeah. Fun, wouldn't it? They'd look great. What, what would Griffs think that I would change? I think that you would have one Terminator. Oh. Everything's exactly the same, only there's only the one Terminator, right? And he's like battling against all the swarms of Tyranids. And at the very end, yeah. when he's down on one knee, that's when the rest of the Terminators teleport in. <laughs> that, I mean, that's quite fun yeah. in itself. That's a pretty good, like, that's a, that's a serious, like, okay, consideration fair. of what I do for normal. No, I just changed all the CG models into the, the old Tyranids. Boom. <laughs> It's the old tyranny. It's the yeah, old tyranny. Yeah. Yeah. Just do that. <laughs> I'd be happy. I'd be like, hey, look at them. Yeah. Look at that kind of No, th your suggestion is an actual, like, legitimate thing that you would change <laughs> to be make a good cinematic trailer. No, hey, just one Terminator, the, the librarian. Uh, is ev evading a horde of tyranids, and then at the last mm -hmm. moment, like you said, you get the the rest of them coming in. Maybe you have the yeah. the, uh, the dreadnought drop in as well behind them. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that'd be cool. That that'd be better, I think. Yep. Yeah. Do 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 You know that dun. dreadnought is freaking huge. The is it the ironclad dreadnought that one? It's or oh, the brutalis. The brutalis. Oh, yeah. it's the brutalis. I've uh, seen the brutalis it, with the clawed huge. hands, and the clawed hands mm. equivalent is meant to be a monster on the table. Mm, it yes. chews oh, through people. You should see its stats. It's a, it's a bastard. I haven't seen stats, but I saw <laughs> it played on a game. Um, I've, I've been yeah. watching like a battle battle reports and stuff on YouTube, and there's this mm. quite very American styled one. Uh, and mm. the, the yeah, the brutalis was just eating it's, the Gene Steeler cults yeah. alive. <laughs> it, yeah. it is a nasty, nasty thing, the brutalis. Although in this set, it's obviously weighed up against the Khan effects. Mm, um, yeah, the the, the Freema killer and that that it's a good match. A would good it match. would it be a better match if? If it was the melee one rather than a ranged one, because then you could have them both melee would, each other, have a bit yeah, of a hug. It probably would, because they're yeah. quite well matched in that regard. Although yeah, I, I yeah. would still give it to the Screamer Killer in melee. Mm. It's a nasty piece of work, that thing. God, I've got to get my arse in gear and finish it. <laughs> finish the set. I really do. Uh, right. Should we move on to the best AOS release? Sure. Yeah. Cities of Sigma, uh, I would I, imagine. I, could tell, I was going to say, yes, well, let's talk about the Cities of Sigma. Shall I'd say we? Flesh Eater yeah, Courts, but technically the Flesh Eater Courts aren't out yet. Right. We just had a preview. Ah, yes. Yeah. So the, I, I'd say they don't count because they're going to be a 2024 yeah. release, really. That's mm -hmm. a fair point. Yeah. Well, you're going to be surprised by this then. So. Oh, uh, really? Oh, yeah. They, 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 dark Horse in this one. So oh. um, in the back shits, we've got the new Bretonians, <laughs> and this time it's real. <laughs> I'll, I'll suggest a batch it Kragnos. <laughs> there we go. Uh, we've got the hordes of monkeys and killer crabs. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We we that, need we yeah. need a full like Warcraft uh, Warcry kit yeah. of mm -hmm. just animals. Yep. Yep. Just animals. Just the pets and familiars. Yeah. And things, yeah. Oh, that'd be great. Uh, that would be great, and it would sell out. Oh, I, yeah. It would sell. Out. Yeah, because people would buy just to put into their armies of the bases or mm -hmm. terrain oh yeah do, yeah that'd be fun oh. yeah they need to do that i uh, i just want to uh, sit here and uh, point out two of the batchets which i'm fairly mm. convinced are aimed entirely at me uh <laughs> one of them is <laughs> my god who saw these new chaos dwarfs coming aren't they brilliant <laughs> oh that, that is aimed at that feels definitely. mean mm -hmm. and <laughs> i didn't expect fimir Ah, oh, that is me. Also, yeah, they are totally aimed at you, Adam. Holy <laughs> gruff. Yep, yep. Uh, <laughs> but of course, there's also one aimed at Andy, which says, Ooh. I didn't see a Vampire Counts refresh coming this soon. No, I know, uh, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <sighs> no one went for the real bar. No one went for, like, the, oh, I didn't expect 40k Emperor's Children. No, 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 no they didn't. I, th I think, I think, because that hurts everyone, George. <laughs> that would have wounded. Not just you, yeah, it hurts everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Still rumoured they're coming. Uh, 
Still yeah, oh, well, it's kind of, I mean, it's it's confirmed in the sense that they've said they are going to do <laughs> yeah. them. But, like, when yeah. is anybody to guess? <laughs> so there's there's three which really stand out in the pack. Um, yeah. Obviously, it's, it's a Sigma. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. Um, obviously. Usheron and the new uh, Flesh Eater Courts. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. The Seraphon. Interesting. Yeah, they were a good. They were a good release, weren't mm. they? This time round, yeah. they were a very good release. I forgot that they were this year. I thought they were yeah. last year. To no, be honest, no, they were this year. Yeah. Um, mm. The Trogoth King got a, a decent run as well. Um, oh, a lot of people, yeah. a lot of people okay. seem to get behind the Trogoth King. Surprisingly enough, I can see that. Um, good morning. And a few people got behind Ionis Cryptborn. So people seem Which to like. Which one was Ionis Cryptborn? He's the Stormcast, Stormcast, Stormcast on the yeah, Stormcast on a dragon. Oh. The ch- the yeah, chaplain, yeah, the space marine yeah. chaplain. And dra- yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Dragon, it's yeah. it's a nice mini. It's mm-hmm. a nice one. Yeah, it's a lovely mini that one. Yeah. So out of all them, what do you think took it? What do you think took it? I mean, I'd, I'd still go for cities of Sigma. I'd be surprised if it's anything else. I'd like to say Usheron, but I kind of feel weird because he's not out yet. He's mm-hmm. he's a 2024 release. If it's reveal, yeah, I'd go with Usheron. But mm-hmm. if it's released, yeah. then, I mean, he's not out yet. The undead, uh, the flesh eaters aren't out yet. Technically, um, I don't know. The answer who who took the best AOS release of the year is the Sarah Cities of Sigma. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> <That's a Sigma>. yeah. <laughs> of course but to be honest with you, the Seraphon were nipping at its heels all the way through. Really? Yeah, like, that's what's the dif- nice. What's that's, the difference between them? Out of interest, uh, in the final bit, there is three percent difference between the Seraphon and the Cities of Sigma. That's pretty good. Mm. Pretty damn good. I'm surprised and very pleasantly so. Yeah, yeah. Because that was a good release. The Seraphon were mm. actually a brilliant release. No, yeah, it's uh, very, very surprising. And to be honest with you, I'm quite, I was quite pleased with that. Yeah. You know? mm. Yeah, very pleased. Um, so we're now going to move on to the minis of the year, the 40k yeah. mini of the year. Um, oh, that's either going to be Angron or the Lion. <laughs> Anna. That would make sense. Yeah. Um, wh- it's always going to be a Primark, isn't it? <laughs> well, the big models, they always look really good, mm. don't they? Yeah, they, they? You know, they're Primarks. Yeah. They've got that that very special patina about them. Mm. So it's going to be one of them. Um, being a Chaos <laughs> Boy. Well, being a Chaos Boy, it doesn't matter, does it? Either way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the, um, the Batchets, we've got who can actually buy these things. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, we've got the uh, hero's duty, which I actually think is meant to be the commissar's duty, but uh, <laughs> hero's duty is, of course, the uh, the name of the game from uh, Wreck It Ralph. So, oh, is it? Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> so I, I don't know if that was uh, a, a mistake or or not. Um, <laughs> what I built at the Warhammer Fest: Build Your Own. Scrap heap challenge. <laughs> Did they include a picture of what they built? No, there's no way of attaching pictures, Damn. unfortunately. Damn. If you are the person who <laughs> voted for the miniature that you built, please get in contact so I can see what you built. Uh, yeah. <laughs> one of the saddest things about like the end of this year is that Warhammer Fest has not been announced for next year. Are we, they going to do it? Because it was such a weird so. event last year. Yeah, I don't think it is. I don't think it's happening this year. Mm. It's a shame. Oh, because I, I, the Sunday that uh, me and uh, Darren um, sat down, we just started talking to all the people on the table, and we just started building stuff. It was like bliss. It was the best day. Oh, so much fun. That would have been so much fun. Yeah, it was. We- and it, ne- it, it was rocky from what you and everybody said, but it's it, you know, a place to start from, and they could have yeah. improved upon mm, it. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. You could Instead of just packing your kit up and taking your ball home. Yeah. I mean, Which might not be the case. It's just, you know. I mean, the only thing I can think of now is that they're going to announce it in February yeah, maybe. for maybe October, mm-hmm. August, September kind of time. I don't. Maybe. I think that August. Do you is, think that's too soon? I think August is too soon. Mm, um, yeah. Yeah. It, I thought they might want to try and get the summerish kind of time again because mm-hmm. that's not an awful time to try and grab the the kids to kind of come into yeah. events and whatnot. The, the problem is, I've looked around and you know nobody's got anything. There's no rumors. There's no nothing. Right, mm. so that oh. probably means that nothing's been booked, and if nothing's been booked, yeah, then yeah, you're not gonna, you're not gonna organize a convention for August this year starting now, are you? <laughs> <laughs> you do if you want stress. If you don't like your employees and you like them freaking out, mm. 
So, I mean, Crying. September maybe if they announce it in February, but I just don't see it. That's still a small window, yeah. isn't it? Very, very, very small. But anyhow, um, so 40k mini of the year. At the top of the list, we have the new Screamer Killer. Oh, interesting. Angron. That's a fun choice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The yeah. Lion. Angron, yep. Yep. It's going to be Angron or the Lion. I mean, and given there are, um, I mean, who who is the bigger player base? I think there are more Imperials, aren't there? So I'd, I'd go with the Lion. Mm hmm. Now I'm going to say that the Screamer Killer did some amazing work here, right? So the uh, the new Carnifex, um, it absolutely bowled me over with just how many votes it got. It got that's good. A that's lot. great. Well, it, it's brilliant. I mean, mm. it, it is. It's. It's. I, I was looking away up there though because it's up there. It's over there <laughs> right now. It's a great miniature. The uh, Angron comes in next, with the mm. Lion taking the first place. Interesting. Yeah, I okay. thought it might be. But so, I had a feeling it might be. The lion is five percent difference between the lion and Angron, and three percent difference between Angron different. and the new Carnifex. Yeah. So pretty damn yeah. good. I mean, and I get it. I mean, I love Angron so much, and it was great to see him back. But he was a bit more inevitable than the lion, I think. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I think I'd still choose the Angron because I think he's visually a bit more, uh, as a model, a bit oh, more yeah. interesting. I think yeah. the sculpting oh, God, yeah. better on I mean, him. Speaking personally, I would go for Angron because I think he's amazing and I love the character, but I can definitely see why in like background terms and whatnot, the lion took this one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was such a big thing. And also the, the second of the Imperial Primarchs, I mean, there was never really any guarantee they were going to bring any of the Imperials back anyway, you know, so this is, this was significant. Mm -hmm. These, uh, because I haven't read anything on the lion, do you think the lion's coming across of uh, being more interesting than Robot Girly Man? Oh, definitely. Oh, I mean, don't God, get me wrong. Yes. I love, I love Robotay in the forty k setting. I think he's really good. Sure. But, um, I think he's a really interesting he was. character. Well, um, I mean, but, how many other but, people but, in forty k have scared a priest so much he shat himself? Mm, yeah, exactly. Which is a thing that um, actually happened. Yeah, yeah, it actually happened. But the lion is really interesting because you again, you don't really know what he's doing. The mm. He's not really part of the Imperium as Robote understands it. No. You know, it's it's really interesting. Whilst Robote took the reins and you know, started guiding the Imperium, Lyons, well, Johnson's, he's just kind of hanging around. You know, he's doing his thing. It's almost like he's the, rejected it, isn't yeah. it? It's almost like he's like, no, it's too corrupt. I don't want anything to do with it. I am, <laughs> we are doing our own thing now. And that's the end of well, it. There's two things about uh, Lionel Johnson that really interested me in his, um, in his story. One was that, you know, when he comes back, he's like angry because something's happened to him. Mm. He's not as strong or fast as he was. And mm -hmm. he's like kicking the shit out of like Chaos Space Marines, like literally yeah. just wiping the floor with them. And he's shouting mm -hmm. at them, What have you done to me? What have you done to me? Mm -hmm. One of the Chaos Marines just goes, You got old. <laughs> yeah, you got old. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what the hell do you mean? Why are you weaker? You, yeah, Look at you, what you've done. <laughs> it's like, this, you know, 10,000 years. It's quite a while, mm -hmm. isn't it? But I love the fact that he, he got angry because he's not he's not strong as fast he's as he not used to be. As spry as he used to but be. But he's you know. still you know what? For over ten thousand years, he's looking pretty good. Oh yeah. Should, it, should he have been modeled with a Zimmer frame with battle guns on them with bolters <laughs> attached? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes is the answer to that. Uh, uh so yeah. Uh, I'm aware that I, I've stopped reading out the um the little poem thing. I'm gonna read the entire thing at the end. Uh, just so okay, that cool. The thing. But, and he's a great model, isn't it? I mean, that yeah. is a stunner of a model. Like, yeah. It's really, really cool. Uh, right, Age of Sigma mini of the year. Individual mini of the year. Ooh, the lion uh, thing from Cities of Sigma? It. You know, the, the big wing yeah. griffin yeah. manticore <laughs> thing? The uh, yeah. manticore. That's yeah. the one, yeah. The Cities of Sigma manticore's in there. Ionis okay. Cripborn, mm -hmm. the Warden of Souls. The Ionis, yeah, yeah, of course. Aberash. Which one's Aberash? Aberash. The Chaos Dwarf. Yeah, there's, that, that, there's no mini of Aberash. Nope, there isn't. I've just noticed that Aberash one there. Is, yeah. Yeah, Aberash <laughs> is the uh, the Mortark of the uh, Blood Dragon yeah. vampires. Oh, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> there's no mini of him. There's never been a mini of him. No, uh, so yeah. Uh, Not yet. 
anyway, not yet. The ones that got uh, a lot of votes are the Slan Star Master, uh, Ina Scribborn, Usharan, Sister mm-hmm. Sigma mm-hmm. Mantis. Sure, not out yet. It's yeah. not out yet. It yeah. doesn't count. No. no, I was going to say, not out yet. And uh, I don't know who wrote it, but I'm going to find out who uh, who did it and I'm going to ask them questions. <laughs> and that's uh, the, the semi nude model of Adam. Um, <laughs> of you? Yes. It's a semi-nude model of you. Apparently so. I'm a little confused huh. and scared. What army is he associated with? Fire Slayers, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that probably is it, isn't it? <laughs> is it seen short... your Fire Slayers army, naked, screaming with yeah. an axe. Yeah, short, fat and hairy. Yeah, sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> screaming. <laughs> Don't forget screaming. And screaming. Uh, yeah. So yeah, Slant Star Master, Cripborn and Usheran. Oh, and the Manticore. Um, mantle, yeah. I like the fact that nobody's actually put down the name of the woman riding the manticore. It's just the no, manticore. It's the manticore. It's the monster, right? Yeah, that's what cool. matters. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, what, do, what do you guys think? What do you think takes uh, it? The manticore. Mm-hmm. I'm going for the manticore. Mm, you are both correct. The manticore did yeah. take it. Um, it's not... so nice. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, I mean, they've done a lot of manticores down the t- down you know the eons of Games Workshop, and this is by far the best one. You just need to put Dieter on there now. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Oh, God, yes. Absolutely. Yeah, they do. They do. Um, all right, then. We'll move into the other best releases. So this is from Necromunda Blood Bowl. Anything that isn't um, the top. Oh, Blood Bowl took some. There's some brilliant Blood Bowl teams out there this mm. season. Mm. And weirdly enough, oh, Blood Bowl God. did not get much of a showing in this year's... Uh, Oh, well, I think it's because wow. it is one of the more niche, niche games, yeah. isn't it, you know? It's it. I kind of get that. I kind of get that. It's sad because some of those teams that have been released are standout. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Well, Blood Bowl just does, it, it does action mo- motion in a very cartoony way, which mm-hmm. I really like. Really yeah. like. Um, we've got Rats, which I think is a uh, reference to the Ghost song, um, which you I don't know if people know it or not, but uh, yeah, it just there's a lot of R's and it just goes rats. I thought I might be making a Blood Bowl uh, uh, Skaven reference. Maybe, maybe it, hey, it just okay. says just says rats. So I don't know. Um, squats. Okay, uh, okay. The Death Core Kill Team. Ne- oh yeah. Necromunda yeah, 2023 that's... edition. Mm-hmm. Which I now own, mm-hmm. I now own that. <laughs> mm-hmm. That took a while. Uh, yeah. The, yeah, the Palanite Taurus for Necromunda. Which one's that one? That's the really cool car tank that came out for Necromunda. Oh, vehicle, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is cool. And the Horus Heresy Legio, Legiones Astartes Battle Group. Legiones. No. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> um, that's that's new epic, isn't it? I assume so. Okay. All right. I think it, yeah, it will be because I can't, I can't be actual horror series. Um, no, but yeah, no. I think that's for, for battle group. So um, I'll give you a clue. Mm. Necromunda and mm-hmm. Death Core did really well for themselves. I thought they might. Mm. I was going to say the Death Core were really popular, weren't they? At number three is the Palanite Tauros. It mm-hmm. did very well for itself, surprisingly. Uh, at number two, Necromunda 2023. And at mm-hmm. number one, the Death Core Kill Team. I had hmm. a feeling it might be. It, uh, it did very well for itself. I think a lot of people loved that set. Yeah. They loved that set. They really did. Which then brings us to the final award of the evening. Oh, my God. Yeah. This is the overall mini of the year. Oh God! There was there were some good ones this year, last year really. Well, mm. um, I mean, personally, probably Angron. So, um, ones that didn't get a huge amount of votes. I'm just going to put it that way. Mm. Uh, the Warhammer Plus oh. Year Three Subscriber Mini, the Unbroken, the Guard. Ah, oh. um, it's nice that you got mentioned. The the mm. havocs I kit bashed from spare parts I had lying around. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we've got um, the giant hat that I'm now wearing to make me feel like an Abites. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck's sake, people. What 
what's wrong with you all? Uh, this picture of a penis that looks like the Pope. <laughs> Just, what's wrong with that penis? What's wrong with the Pope? Eh, he's old. Uh, <laughs> uh, Oh, there was another one. Where did I put it? Ah, here it is. Uh, my Chaos Terminator that I used too much polystyrene cement on and is now being used as a Chaos Spawn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know that for you. Uh, right. So, the ones that jumped out and took a lot of votes. Ionis Cripborn. Mm. Manticore. Yeah. Angron. Mm. The Lion. Mm -hmm. mm. Monkey. <laughs> Ooh. I'm not kidding. Mm. The fucking war cry mm. monkey. Right. I'm going to put this here. The war cry monkeys took more votes than either of the subscriber minis. I'm just going to put that out there. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Are these the, the ghoul monkeys? Yes. Huh. Great. That's brilliant. In my heart See, of hearts, animals, I, I'd love it to be the monkeys. <laughs> I'd love it to be the monkeys yeah. because it would be funny if they beat Angron and mm -hmm. the lion. <laughs> Wouldn't it just? Wouldn't it just? Yeah. Um, they beat Usheran. I'll give you that much. Well, Usheran's <laughs> now yet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Usheran doesn't count. It doesn't count. We haven't even had a preview for he's coming out next week. How about if I told you <laughs> that the uh, the Warcry monkeys beat Ionis Cripborn? <laughs> Good. Wow. Which leaves Angron, Manticore, and the Lion. Do you think the monkeys beat any more of them? Oh. Ah. <laughs> I don't know. I think that might have been third place. <laughs> yeah. Like if if we're going for what I what is legitimately the best mini, it's it's I would say Angron. Mm -hmm. If we're talking oh, about yeah, haha, yeah. this is funny. Fuck you. I put the monkeys because <laughs> mm -hmm. it would be funny. <laughs> so that that would be my answer. A real answer. Angron. Haha. Lamau. Uh, monkeys. Mm -hmm. All right, so if I give you a top four, all right, okay. a top four no, of no, the no. lion, Angron, monkeys, and Manticore. Manticore took it, didn't uh, it? That, that, that's not in order. That's just a, a top four. Oh, it's I, not I wanna, in order. I want you to oh, okay. see if you can tell which of those the monkeys beat. Did it beat one? Oh, Did it God. beat two? Did it beat three? Did the monkeys win? What do you guys think? Yeah. Oh, my God. Did it beat the Manticore? No idea. I can see them beating it the Manticore. It beat the Manticore. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Oh the monkeys God. beat the did Manticore. It, beat yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it did not. So the monkeys came ah. in at third place. Okay, that makes okay. sense. Yeah. That does make sense. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking people. Wow. Wow. I good choice. It. I love it. That is a that is a shocker. It's a good choice, but it's a shocker. It's a shame because they're not like fun, cute monkeys. They're no. ugly monkeys. They're no. really sinister. I don't know what. They're really evil monkeys. Yeah. Oh, I don't know what happened to people, but good wow. God. People like wow. monkeys, bro. I don't yeah. know. Mm, right. So, so monkeys came in at third. Yeah. So that means again, it's Angron, Angron and the Lion. And the lion. Yeah. yeah, I'd say wow. it has to be Angron because I think people I would have said. Lion. I think people would have said best mini is Angron, best forty mm -hmm. k mini is the Lion. So they could have had both of them in. That makes sense to me. I would, I would definitely want it to be Angron. You guys are absolutely on the money. The Lion comes in yeah. second. Angron wins overall mini of the year. It's, I mean, a, it's a great mini. It's Angron. Yeah, it's it's, it's so Angron. good. There's so much good detail on him. Mm. It is so good, yeah. isn't it? I mean, I love all the Demon Primarchs, and he's a, he's a great addition. He's a great addition to them. Uh, and people have been waiting for Angron. He is one of he's been one of the favourites for a long time. Yeah, he's a great character. A long, long time. So yeah, it's it's great to see him updated like yeah. this. No, my my problem with it, it still sticks is I think he looks too much like a generic bloodthirster, but that's just how he looks. Yeah. And like, that's kind of corn as well. Yeah, exactly. I can't begrudge it. Yeah. Yeah. I think it would have been better if he was standing more upright, like a bit more, um, less hunched. I know that hunched mm. gives him that really powerful look, but if he, that sort of beast. Yeah, look. but if he was if he was standing, like I don't know, maybe one leg up and like standing further up with a the sword in the ground, like the axe in the ground. And do you know? Do you know what that sword is, Adam? Mm. Have you read the background on the? Sword? I don't actually know. Off the top of my head. No, it's called Samniarius, and it's it's the soul of a Slaneshi demon that yes. Angron beat to death with an iron bar. That's right, <laughs> yeah. That became that sword. 
then in that case, you know, I'd have that sword being clenched between his butt cheeks for just maximum uh, unfortunateness. Yeah, so great, right? Sam the Arius, it's called. I painted and the pink. Axis spine grinder. Like luminous pink. Some people have. Mm. Oh, Some that's people good. have. Yeah. To represent the fact that it's a slanish yeah. demon trap. Yeah. It really is good, isn't it? That, that makes me very happy. And I love yeah. the, the details of things like the butcher's nails mm -hmm. becoming the main and whatnot. Oh, it's, it's, it is a, it's a stunner. I mean, I again, I don't. I, I say I don't want to collect world eaters, but you don't need I to collect that. them. You just buy no. them. But the thing is, if I get that, I'm gonna get some world eaters. I'm not gonna lie. I, mean, I have all this year. I have been so tempted to go world eaters. I mean, do you have a Mortarion yet, George? I've got Mortarion. Yeah, I haven't put him together. And then you yet, need Angron. Yes, I've, got <laughs> I've got more because you've got Magnus. Got so yeah. You know. I do. I, well, I'm going to get them all. I've got to get them all. got to get them um, all. Primax. <laughs> well, here's the question. Are you, are you going to get um, Fulgrim? Because he's technically the only one of the four you'd be missing, but it is... I'm not. Not this you know, version of him, no. No, okay. Not you, this version of him, Fingers no. crossed they'll do a, a plastic kit kind of deal. Yeah. yeah well, okay. they've got to. I mean, like they, they've absolutely got to do a plastic kit of Fulgrim at some point, but um, not the not the current version. No, <laughs> it's <laughs> as good as it looks, as brilliant as it looks. It's just it's going to snap to bits. Yeah. Mm. yeah, that's the reason he's been called Fulgrim the Fragile. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, right, let's get this entire poem. Okay. Once upon a website loading, my wallet contents the site was goading. With a pensive stare and a shaking hand, I clicked the basket and spent a grand. Those dark days for parcels, I did wait and hope that my need it would sate. And on a cold and dreary morn, I once again became blessed by corn. World eaters galore fell from the box, bashing away the death guard pox. <laughs> sweeping away the thousand sons the emperor's children they were done Sorry, just trying to... the cycle of painting begins anew batch painting many and a few quoth the hobbyist fuck my life <laughs> yeah there you go <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> is the is the the poem called Quoth the Hobbit? <laughs> I think it probably is. It's uh, once again just somebody hiding a little poem. It must be the same person. It's like yeah, who, it must be. Whoever yeah. you are out there that is putting these things in each year, please come forward because yeah, well I well think done. you deserve some form of award yourself. Yeah. It's very you good. Do. It, 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 it grants ours like endless amusement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I wonder if it's the same person who did the entire flies thing from a couple of years yeah, ago. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. I'm so I'm so pleased to see Angron take that. I'm very yeah. happy about that. Yeah, it was. Uh, I think honestly, when you, you sort of look at it, break it down into the best releases and best. What's interesting to me. Um, I don't know if it's interesting to anyone else, but the best releases was all miniatures in both AOS and mm -hmm. um, 40K. Not many people yeah. did, you know, the, you know, the box sets and stuff as well, but not many people right. did um, codexes or um, yeah. uh, 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 battle, battle tomes. tomes yeah. Anything like that. Interesting. Which, mm, Be interesting. It's a, a year, a very light year for, uh, for the actual books. And that's interesting because the books are, Probably the best they've been for a while. Yeah, I'm just wondering if people didn't think about them when they were putting these yeah, together. That might have been it. Maybe. That might have been it. Yeah, that. Yeah, the, there isn't any real standout books because they've all been at a very high level. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. I mean, if you look at the AOS, the current AOS range, that's exactly the case. They're yeah. all really, really good. Oh, good God, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. It, it says a lot when I, I honestly feel that the battle tomes that are coming out for AOS now are probably better than any of the Warhammer Armies books that have ever been mm. released. Yeah. Uh, and I want to know. I, I, I mean, you know, I've got all the Chaos ones, obviously, you know, and they are the best Chaos books. Yeah. For, they are. They're the, just really, really good. The Slaves to Darkness book is like, it's genius yeah. the way it's written. Mega, yeah. isn't it? It's mega. That one is particularly brilliant. Mm. I mean, they. It, they've just, I don't know, they just went so hard on that one for some reason. It's, it's this really it's, weird tone that's all the way through it. That Yeah. I just, 
I, I don't understand how they managed to do it, but they've got this tone, this yeah. very defeatist yet hopeful tone. Mm. It, it's odd, but it's really interesting, isn't it? That that whole notion of like chaos worship being the main form of worship and culture mm -hmm. in the realms, and therefore it's kind of the Sigma rights who are the invaders. I, yeah. I, I, I kind of love that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, it is. It's very, very cool. You know that the the Stormcast books are very bombastic and boom, 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 boom. but the the, the, the Sigma book is it's uh, it hints at a much darker um, experience. Yeah, mm -hmm. the it, it's not the City of Sigma book. You would have thought would have been this very hopeful, shining a light in the darkness mm -hmm. style, but it's not. Yeah. It's got a very sinister feel to it. Yeah, which I quite liked. It's a uh, yeah, I, I do like it. That sense of things unraveling. That's a lot yes. of fun, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, that's a lot of fun. Well, it's not just that. It's a sense of um, a house of lies. You know, it's the yeah. put it, You know, they they're going out into the wilderness, but there's like all this stuff about the the Dawnbringer Crusades being basically a lie. You know, they're they're not mm -hmm. they're not actual uh, visions and prophecies telling people to go places. It's made up. You know, it, yeah. it's been designed to force people to think it's their idea to go out and do this stuff. It's it's more political, mm. isn't it, than like metaphysical, which is really interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a really good book, really good book. It's those hints in the chaos books when you read it alongside the Cities of Sigmar one as well, where like it suggests that the Dawnbringer Crusades are actually feeding chaos. Yeah, oh, they're failing. Yeah, they're failing big, mm. like big style. Even the civilizations they're setting up are, are becoming breeding grounds for things like the cults of Zeech and Slanesh. It's uh, it's not really working. Which yeah, it, it ties into the uh, the entire re re revitalization of the flesh eater courts. Yeah, it's because mm -hmm. these people are going out into the wilds and stirring up trouble. Yeah, that's yep. what's causing the flesh eater courts to to start waking up and start running around and yeah. doing loads of damage. It's and of course. You know, these new cities are coming up and then they're being hit by the Nurgle uh, despair plague and then it's mm -hmm. the uh, the flesh eater courts are coming in with these um, bizarre fucking guys with bones that they crack and people start turning into <laughs> uh, into ghouls <laughs> it's great yeah I like that I like that a lot and, ah. the only defense against like ultimate despair being delusion yeah. I think that's really cool I really like that so smart so smart so that's us done then with the fluffies for another year. Yeah. Um, a Ooh. lot of interesting stuff. A lot of interesting stuff. Yeah. I thought. Very interesting this time around. Mm. So I will, uh, I will contact the, uh, the winners. <laughs> um, I'm not entirely sure how the hell I'm going to tell uh, Peachy. It's like, I have no, <laughs> no way of getting hold of him. So <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to do that, but I will, I will send that over. Um, but yeah, I thank you very much to everybody who took part this year. It's been, once again, this little slice of seeing where things lie for the year that's gone by. Yeah. It always fascinates me. It always interests me. It's always interesting and it's always fun, guys. So thanks for engaging. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you guys good. You guys good. So with all that being said, then we will start getting out of here. We will begin with, and I roll the wheel of misfortune. Dig, 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 dig. Andy. Ah. Where can people find you if they so wish to feast upon your rotting flesh? Uh, you can find me on Twitter as Decayed Andy, uh, uh, Twitch Decayed Andy, which is where we're streaming from now. Um, on YouTube as Decayed Andy as well. I also on the Moonbase Two podcast where I talk about Transformers uh, each and every week on a Sundal day. <laughs> Sundal day. Sundal day. Yeah, the Sundal day. Sundal day. Yeah, where you trundle on to <laughs> Mundal day. <laughs> Does that mean Tuesday Trundle Day? No, it's it's Saturday Tuesday. <gasps> and then Wednesday is Wondle Day, the day of Wondles. No, no, we Wednesday is Weddles Day. Oh, okay. What's Thursday? Turd's Day. Because <laughs> it's poop. <laughs> and Friday is Stab a Person to Death Day. Frizzle Day. Frizzle Day, okay. That's very gangster of you. Thank you. You're welcome. George. <laughs> If oh, uh, if people wanted well, to hide outside your house and uh, watch you painting oil paintings in some kind of weird Victorian version of voyeurism, where could they find you? 
Oh, uh, well, if they wanted to do that, it'd be very, very interesting. But um, <laughs> you can find me over at YouTube at Exaggerated Elegy, where there are lots of discussions on film and cinema and fiction and media and also video game let's plays and a bit more sort of fluff and hammer adjacent stuff it's actually what it's called fluff and hammer adjacent yep. um if you go over to strangeplaygrounds.com you can find links to all of my published fiction my short story collections and whatnot or just go over to amazon and type in george daniel lee you'll find all of my short stories and short story collections and published work over there um if you go to gingernutsofhorror.com you will find an ongoing series of articles called my uh, my life in horror which i inherited from my a good compatriot kit power um it's a series of articles on my experience of horror media and whatnot if you go to Arrow Films, you will find the new uh, Hellraiser uh, uh, Quartet of Torment Blu-ray box set and UHD set. And uh, Kit and I feature on the Hellbound Hellraiser 2 disc on the featurette uh, Hell is What They Wanted, which was great fun. And it's the whole set is well worth your time. It's a really cool piece of work. Uh, you can find me on Twitter for now, probably not for very much longer, to be honest. Uh, it's a cesspile. <laughs> um, but you can also find me on Blue Sky uh, at Exaggerated Elegy at the moment. So if you fancy coming and chatting to me, please do so. Cool stuff. Uh, as for me, you can find my personal works and doodlings and creations over at adnickel.weebly.com. Uh, recently, I have started thinking about Quake and yeah. the design aesthetic of Quake and marrying that into an idea of a um, run-and-gun shooter RPG because I don't have enough mm -hmm. ideas. So I've just been That's doodling fun. ideas and concepts and creations and putting them up on the site. Uh, my personal favourite so far is the, um, the Mother of Sorrows, which is a skeleton woman with a cloak with many hands coming out of the fabric. I was very <laughs> pleased with that. I don't know. What about instead do quack? It's like quake but with ducks. <laughs> there must have been a mod back in there the day. There has right? to have been. <laughs> must. Have I'm been. going to look that there up. Absolutely <laughs> has to have been. Go around shooting geese <laughs> or swans. <laughs> it has to have been done. <laughs> I I hope so. I truly hope so. <laughs> um. Outside of that, for the Fluff and Hammer, you can find us on <sighs> Twitter, Blue Sky, Threads, Instagram. I always feel I've forgotten one, but I don't know what it is. I think that's all the, those ones. Uh, you can also find us on Facebook, both as a page and a group. Come and join us. It's good fun. You can also find us on Discord, which is a lovely little community, very well run by uh, Darren and Big Swing and D. Uh, I call them the Double Ds. Um, it's Triple D because it's mm -hmm. Darren and D at Discord. Uh, mm. <laughs> and they do a really good job of keeping that place just, just lovely. It's just lovely in there. <laughs> just lovely. And then Big Swing and D shows off something that he's found in one of his boxes, and everyone just goes, "Oh, I want that." <laughs> it's very sad, <laughs> but yes, um, you can also find me on nowhere because I've decided I'm not actually doing anything personal anymore. It's just that. So, with all that being said, <laughs> I forgot that I had no other social media anymore. It's all fluff and hammer <laughs> all the time. That's it. <laughs> just come and join us where every weekend i put out new stuff whether it be videos whether it be articles whether it be reviews there's always stuff comes out the heavy metty heavy metty the heavy metty oh my god heavy metal galleries uh which is going through every issue of white dwarf and looking at the heavy metal pages within um we also have Necromunda Historica, which is a in-universe uh, exploration of Necromunda, whether it be places, people, or the gangs. Uh, season four of that is about to come out. Um, we also have Mapping the Mortal Realms, which once again is an in-universe exploration of various concepts, places, and people of Age of Sigma. Um, the Old World Order, which is more of an overview of the Warhammer the Old World stuff. Um, the Tomb King series has just about to wrap up this weekend, I think. Um, and last weekend, I dropped a thesis on Tyranid bioweaponry, 
why am I like this? <laughs> <laughs> That's the question I keep asking myself. Uh, Suffer Not the Alien to Live started off as an in-universe exploration of all these things and has swiftly become just this weird series of bizarre theses like tyrannid bioweaponry and jump pack technology. And I don't know why I'm doing this, but I can't seem to stop now. Um, it's just, I don't know why. Uh, and all that being said, we are going to get out of here. So thank you, Andy and George, for joining me on this lovely oh, journey. Always a pleasure. And thank you very much to you guys at home for listening, if indeed you still are. Good night. Yes, thanks so much, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All I ever wanted was you, but you left me alone inside these empty, broken walls. And I can't see it clearly, but it's obvious I know.